Welcome back, everyone, for the third and final time today to the SCC. We're still in North America, and we actually are going to get to see Mexidi on set one more time going up against Trick Babushka. Of course, my name is Dolson. Agro with me to chair to this set. How's it going over there, Agro? It's going pretty well, man. You know, it's uh, it's been a pretty exciting day so far of North America. I mean, Mexidi on set, a, a bit of a tough loss up against Bluegie and the Woogies, but Blue Gang, the Woogies are, are a very, very strong team. Certainly one to be watching out for at the top of this region. Their matchup now up against Trick Babushka is going to be a good measuring stick on which half of the of the season are they on, basically. Of, of the standings, do you think they'll be on towards the end of this split? Because that, these are the two teams that are middling right now, I think. That Megxiety Onset, Trick Babushka, and Elevate are the three teams that are, are trying to buy for that fourth, maybe third place if they can get red hot sort of position and this is going to be a big game for those teams that the, the team that wins this certainly has a chance to claim that fourth place seed pretty easily and it wasn't without uh, you know a little bit of, of struggle that Mexidi or Boogie and the Woogies rather took set number two uh, there was at least a, a bit of a fight there from Mexidi on set so while we expect Boogie and the Woogies to be performing very well in, in a lot of these games Mexidi on set did give them a run for their money, so I think that this set now carries even a little bit more weight against Trick Babushka, especially on a week like this. You don't want to go out 0 for 2 on your games if you're Mexidi on set. You came within 1 in set number 2. This early on, to, to lose back-to-back, -back, especially after a lengthy set earlier in the day, it's got to be frustrating. Definitely. I mean, these splits are not super long. They, you know, they're pretty quick splits in the Smite Challenger circuit, so you cannot really afford on your double header weeks to go 0-2, even if it is against very good competition, because frankly, all these teams are pretty solid. So yep. you don't have those weeks where you go, oh, you know, we didn't have a chance. We're, we're just going to try and take it next week. It's not really an option at this level. So this is going to be a big set for Megxidi Onset for sure. And I think it'll be interesting. Uh, you know, one thing that sort of stood out to me today, I mean, if we want to talk more specific pick and ban, not even about these two teams, but I feel like I've seen more Discordia today than I'm used to seeing recently. I mean, it could be a byproduct of heavier mid lane priority in the, in the ban column. But nonetheless, I mean, even though it's only a, a few games, I think in the few sets we've seen today, Discordia has become pretty important. I mean, Crimson basically hard carried that last game on it for uh, for Blue Gang, the Woogies. Discordia is just one of those picks that when you have an aggressive support or aggressive soul laner that wants to really push their lead, Discordia passive is really solid at helping that out. And then she becomes a real contributor towards the mid to late game. Her own early game is not particularly potent, but that's covered up by the fact that she's making her teammate better, whoever has that top player damage. Plus, I think it's just a comfort pick for a lot of the players that we've seen in mid so far, and, and it's a pick that you're usually not going to get too punished for going for. I didn't even notice Mackenzie laying on the bed back there until we came to your Yeah, single. she blends she in, right? Chilling. There She's she just is. absolutely chill. Is, is the little elephant like her favorite spot up there? She kind of lean into that little uh, yeah. the little nook. Oh yeah, she loves she loves having the backrest <laughs> there. She usually puts her head up on top of it. That's where it was right before this. But now she got a little sleepier, and so she. Yes. Goes down to take a little nap looking out the window. She loves looking out this window. This bed is all hers, by the way. I know chat thinks this is my bedroom. Yes. This is Mackenzie's bedroom. She just, she owns, right. she owns the whole apartment, to be honest. But, right, that but is a Particularly dog bed. this room is really all hers. <laughs> right, it's a dog bed in your office there and, and not yes. a guest well, bed for other humans, <laughs> absolutely. Exactly. Well, I mentioned uh, that Discordia came about because of some mid lane priority in the ban phase and Google Khan, Merlin, Persephone, all three band out here so could maybe open the door to something like the discordia uh rearing her head here but instead i would say three relatively interesting picks for trick babushka here not in the sense that we don't see them but in the sense that they, they are a little bit less frequently seen between the naja ganesh maybe specifically in that guardian role and the osiris yeah, Osiris is a pick that, that has dominated in the past, but it's started to fall off. We see a lot more Cullens and, and, and still King Arthur quite a bit. So probably just a comfort pick here for Trick Babushka. I think Ganesh is a pick that a lot of support players are starting to see rise in popularity and, and really start to uh, see a lot of support players that just love playing this Ganesh pick. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit more of it, but this early is certainly a surprise. 
The, uh, I love what Anxiety Onset are doing, though. I mean, these are selections in Najan Ganesh that want to all in. You got Geb Shield and you've got Hell Cleanse that makes it pretty easy to get out of those very, very important CCs and try and turn an engagement in your favor. Well, with another Scylla ban, or not another Scylla ban, but another mid lane ban in the form of Scylla, that's going to push Trick Babushka towards that raw. And I, you know, I understand we saw a little bit of the raw yesterday, but over here in NA, this will be the first time we've seen him. I'm, it isn't a pick that I'm seeing a lot of in, in high-level ranked games either. It's it's kind of fallen by the wayside. Sustain meta isn't really right there right now because Divine is such a yeah. core item on a lot of mid laners that I think a lot of people are trying to move away from the sustained mages in mid. But when you have set up like Naja and like Ganesh, Ra, you can easily land that 1-4 combo. That's going to be really key. As always with Ra players, it's how consistently can you land your ult and your 1 without consistent setup. You're going to hit it when they're set up there. That's that's expected at this level. It's can you freehand the ult? Can you can you find it through right. a team fight and hit that priority target? That's going to be the big question mark. But I think Trick Babushka's composition, while unconventional in the sense that we don't see these picks a whole lot, the, the pieces fit together fairly well. I don't see why this comp can't be good. I'm very excited to see how they put those pieces together and what sort of picture that puzzle does end up making. Mexidi Onset, you know, they go towards that hell. It, I feel like, and maybe it's a specific meta thing as we move in to game number one, but I feel like we've seen hell in the solo lane more more often than not, but it will be the Vimana up in that solo lane, which puts Sops on the hell there in that mid lane. Hell is one of those picks that it's always really, really strong in the in the hands of players that play her a lot. It's a very different right. play style that, than most other characters in Smite. And so you're not, not everybody's a hell player. That's just kind of the way the character works. And if you can get those hell players into power positions and let them kind of get the ball rolling and, and get off to a lead and there's not enough itemization against them, the enemy team doesn't focus them properly at any point in the game, then she can be very strong, but she can also be pretty worthless if you if she does fall behind and just becomes mm -hmm. this target practice for the enemy team. So anytime there's a hell, you, you got to keep your eye on her because she's probably going to be the game winner or the game loser one way or the other. Well, I, I send prayers to Doug in this early game because literally every single lane is poked down to half health or less, save the junglers that have now rotated back for some of those jungle buffs, mainly more so here in this solo lane. Between Brandon on this Osiris and, and Mando on the Vimana, they have not shied away from getting low, but in the long lane as well, Data Remember has jumped in. Mort a little bit too far forward there, and the low health is capitalized on by Trick Babushka. Geb Hachiman is not a duo lane pressure that should excite anybody. You shouldn't be looking at Geb <laughs> Hachiman and being like, yes, dude, we are going to jam it in this lane. We're just going to be right on top of their tower line. Ganesh has deceptively good clear because Turn of Fate doesn't only deal damage to the wave, but it also boosts your ADC's damage or anybody around you at a pretty significant margin. So Ganesh lanes usually do have a, a good chance at pressuring early, and Morton Diesel just don't really respect it. That's going to be first blood over to that Kernanos as well. I mean, if there's anything that comes out of that from Exide Onset, Maybe it's Mineral who gets the kill, but instead, probably the worst person you could be going up against with that Kernanos getting an early kill here about three minutes into this game. So so your early game is oppressive enough. Now you have a kill and an assist in that long lane. And if Mineral does maybe what we expect or, or have seen a lot of Guardians do, he can start to push this lead, push uh, you know a little bit of pressure into the mid lane and start to rotate around. I'd certainly expect it. Mineral, after a, a season in the SPL last year, really looks to be the, the hard carry for Trick Babushka in my mind. And that's not something that you often say about supports, but at a competitive level, support difference is usually the biggest difference that you can have. It's, it's huge yeah. to let your support be the, the main playmaker for you. Mineral loves this Ganesh pick. I think that it, it really can make game-changing plays. I don't have to preach to you about how fun Ganesh is and, and, and oh, what no, things that he can do on the battleground, but Mineral is, is certainly a great Ganesh player. And giving him a, an early lead with that assist and setting him up and, and letting him loose on the map, so to speak, I think is a really easy way for Trick Babushka to win a lot of games. And he helps take away at least one of the Oracles there, so no vision granted for anyone for the Fury that will be respawning here in 45 or so seconds. And I mentioned 
you know, maybe some of the the unconvention for tr- Trick Babushka comes in the form of that Naja. I feel like the last time I saw Naja was kind of that weird off assassiny support type role. They're going to move towards Naja in the jungle, though, this time. Mineral's going to look to get aggressive. Drops the ultimate this time. Does plug away a little bit of damage. The re-engage could be on. This is a three versus two in favor of Mexide onset. They think better of it, though. But Mineral putting that early level five to the test. Drops the ultimate. Doesn't find much for it. But but back to the kind of thought. I'm maybe more... It was very a fringe case, I think. I think that it was a fringe case seeing Naja in the, the support role. But uh, you don't really see Naja all that often, much less in the jungle. No, you're right. I mean, support Naja was the the flavor of the year, basically. I mean, it was very, very popular for a little bit. But it can do good damage whenever given the opportunity. Amanda Warrior is taking some good damage here. Has to use the Colossal Fury to disengage. Up to the sky goes a couple. Jingu bang down. Second kill of the game. Brandon Balls. Officially on the board, a three versus two near this blue buff. Mort stunned down, taken low. Shadow Chair, easy to hit your abilities when the enemy is stunned. Three kills on the board now for Trick Babushka, all spread out evenly across the board. Nope. Good rotation over by Mineral. He's there on time. Yuji finds an excellent ultimate in the Naja Ganesh combo. Certainly potent as Sops. Get out to dodge the snipe, but Shadow Chair is on top of just that. Four and oh now for Trick Babushka. And, I, and this is exactly what you want to see, right? Mineral helps get first blood, rotates to right. We get a couple kills there. Then Sops doesn't respect our damage, doesn't pre-cleanse himself for that slow. Ends up getting slowed and prot shredded. Mineral, or Shadow Chair with great accuracy, blind over the wall. But Mineral now a part of all four kills so far for Trick Pabushka. And, and, you know, in the pick and ban, you were saying, well, Ra's dependent on whether or not you can hit those straight line damaging skill shot abilities. Granted, Mort was stunned down on, on one of those shots, but the, the ultimate connects over a wall. Uh, his first ability has been hitting pretty consistently as well. So, you know, Ra, you know, the, the kit is simplistic, but Shadow Chair obviously showing that while the kit is simple, the, the, the skill shot's not necessarily easy to hit. And at 2-0 already up to this point in this game, that's a Ra you already have to be worried about. No doubt. He's already got his cooldown boots. He's going to be stacking a lot of power. There's a lot of different ways to build Ra. Some people want to go full cooldown and just ult like it's a regular ability in team fights, which is a, a possibility for you. Some people want to try and make the one snipe they get a team fight count. Seems like Shadow Chair is a little bit more in that latter camp, which I like more when you have a Naja on your team and a Ganesh who are going to be setting you up for guaranteed snipes. May as well make them guaranteed kill the enemy team. I think that makes a lot of sense. So Shadow Chair off to a good start. I, I love this this Naja Ganesh combo. It's something that we saw a lot of when Ganesh yeah. was first starting to get popular. Naja drops someone directly on a, a very small circle, and it's very easy to see exactly where that's going to be. And Mineral can just drop the Dharmic Pillars, put the Bug Zapper right on that dot, and then knock you up right afterwards. And those two will combine to one-shot you. You won't even need the raw snipe at that point, as long as Mineral is there with ult. Oh, that was a massive amount of damage I didn't expect to see from the Ganesh. Up to the sky, pillars down, <laughs> Shadow Chair from range. He finds himself the snipe third kill of the game for this Ra. Uh, Agro, this is strategic dismantling that I think we're seeing from Trick Babushka. Mexadi Onset have, have tried to rotate over and make these plays. The Mineral now affecting all five of the kills on the board. It, it's the perfect synergy that we were hoping to see from Trick Babushka. And it's all around, it's all It's all with a purpose, Dave, which is the big thing, is that a lot of times at this level, sometimes teams will just rotate and go, okay, we can kill this guy because it'll be fun and he won't like it. So let's let's just go and do it. But all of these right. rotations, all of these kills are off the back of blue buff invades that are going very, very well for Trick Babushka. Brandon takes advantage of this pressure that he's earned by with help from the team, no doubt, but he's also poked out Mando and Jingu pretty low before each of these engagements. But it's just Trick Babushka going over with numbers. Rob, good wave clear at this point in the game. It takes a little bit for him to get up in that wave clear before Celestial Beam will start to full clear. But at this point, it certainly is. And then all it takes is a snipe in order to finish off those kills. So he can rotate pretty freely in the jungle with this type of lead. I love the Brawler's Beat Stick for UG. Get that anti-heal now before you desperately need it. And... Maybe you can make the argument they already do at minute one because of a Hell and of a Mana. Anti-Heal is going to be at a premium this game. I imagine mm -hmm. that's where Shadow Chair is going next. 
in, in sort of thinking on the same vein towards those healing items, Sops opting into the Book of Toth early on in this one. I feel like every once in a while we'll see Hell maybe move into a Bancross or, or something similar for that first item. Uh, what's your take on both mid laners, really, in this case, going towards that book for their first item? Both of these characters are fairly mana hungry, so getting the, the biggest mana item you can makes sense to me. Well, Mineral has dropped a massive ultimate here. Some peel from Mort has delayed the aggression just a little bit. Ooh. One final shot from Shadow would have done it, but that beam not traveling far enough. Very low now from XID Onset, but the idea continues for Trick Babushka here. Let's get aggressive often. It seems to be working out as a Gold Fury will get pulled. XID Onset are, I wouldn't call them low, but chipped away a little bit, and their presence is just enough to make Trick Babushka think twice. UG still has his ultimate, but no ult for Mineral or Shadow Chair means there isn't a whole lot of one-shot potential off of that ultimate, so wise by UG to hold on to it. I think that engagement in mid goes really, really well against most other team compositions. You get three people pretty low, and then you just send them back to base. We pull gold during that time. We get a free gold fury. But because the hell is there for Sops, he can heal everybody up and mm -hmm. keep everybody present on the map to make sure that that is not what happens. So that, I, that idea is fairly solid from Trick Babushka. Maybe Shadow Chair should be holding ult a little bit longer, waiting for some of those beads to go off. But Mineral found a pretty decent ult, so I I've got no problem with him firing it off and just trying to, to find the right target. Happened to miss that time, but didn't cost Trick Babushka too much at all. Well, the kills on the board remain at five for Trick Babushka. That is an early, I would say, 4,000 gold lead here 10 minutes into this game. Trick Babushka hadn't even gotten the Gold Fury just yet. Shadow Chair is on a ward pointed out by Doug there, so they realize that this raw is over the corner. Just going to steal away some of those mid lane camps. But there you, there you see it, the pretty much even 4K gold lead, plus or minus depending on the wave uh, uh, positioning. But the XP closing in on 6,000 this early on, that's maybe even scarier than that gold differential. Uh, that's a lot. I think XP is certainly the, the bigger concern at this point from Anxiety Onset. I mean, Shadow Chair can back and finish a second Relic right now, whereas Sops is only at level 10. Another two level lead in the jungle for UG. Everywhere has a lead except for Day, and even then he probably has at least a small one. That lead could grow here if Gold Fury is taken away. UG Goodbye. pulls Jingu Bang up to the sky. Down they come crashing into the Dharmic Pillars. They find a little bit of damage. Mort down for the third time this game. Half of the deaths on the board from XID Onset. Great stun. Manda Warrior locked down. Three members of Trick Babushka going to force out the Colossal Fury. CC immunity will allow Manda Warrior just to walk away, but Brandon Balls has rejoined this fight back behind that Tier 1 tower. Stun might connect onto Sops, but they have disengaged this fight. A Tier 1 tower likely to fall, and Gold Fury as well for Trick Babushka. Shadow Chair used his ultimate to confirm Gold Fury, so not there in order to finish off Jingu Bang. I'm surprised that there wasn't just enough damage outright with that Ganesh ult. Just ended up being a slight bit short, but that is not a problem at all right now for Trick Babushka. They play that fight nearly perfectly. Yuji pulls someone up into the sky. It's the person who has the best steal potential and the ability to disrupt with that Fear No Evil, make sure it never gets off and never becomes relevant in that team fight with a great ultimate from Yuji. Mineral zones perfectly with his Dharmic Pillars. Shadow Chair secures gold as he should be with his ultimate. This is clean smite by Trick Babushka. Yep. They are just playing really, really well. This is looking like a well-oiled machine so far. And as awkward of a game as it is probably for everyone on Mexiety Onset, you sort of feel like Mando Warriors may be the most off-put. All the Colossal Furies we've seen on screen have been used to disengage, get out of these fights alive, rather than, I guess, what you really want to do on a Vimana, which is use your ultimate, get to the back line, and deal some damage. I feel like it's just such an awkward spot to be as a Vimana when you don't feel comfortable using your ultimate aggressively. It's what you end up having to do in situations where you're just getting blue buffs invaded over and over and over again, and you just don't have any map control, and Mando Warrior really hasn't had the option. I, I really don't know how I feel about picking Vimana in compositions where we know that they're going to be getting a lot of anti-heal anyways, because right. you're just, you're, you're kind of playing in, you're making their anti-heal even more valuable. You, you pick, it's best to pick these sustain-based characters. Vamana, not really necessarily one of those, but is when it comes to the ultimate. In places where you want to make the enemy team 
go, uh, I guess I have to get Ankh, or I guess I have to get Divine, <laughs> but I don't really want to. In this game, they're stoked to be able to get it because it does so much work against the uh, the comp of Megxiety Onset, but don't tell Shadow Chair that because he decided to get Spear of Desolation instead for some reason. I know they're ahead. This is way yeah. more <laughs> effective damage, but that should be Divine 1,000%. Every once in a while, we'll see maybe one Ankh or the other. Back to that as Day, rem Day to Remember has cleaned up more tough game for this Geb aggro. Zero and four for more. The, the Geb just has not brought the presence, I think, that they've been looking for. And these jungle skirmishes just continue to pay off for Trick Babushka. Geb falling behind is really, really tough. Ganesh kills supports really well because they're never going to have purification beads. That silence is going to persist that entire duration. Carries can usually beads, jump away, use a movement ability, try and interrupt. If Geb gets locked down by Ganesh, he's holding that until he either walks away or dies. And it's really been more of the dying so far for Mort Brooklyn. <laughs> I was mentioning support difference being one of the best ways to, to win competitive games earlier on. This is what that looks like so far. Mineral has been a part of every single kill for Trick Babushka. Obviously an increased assist range on the Ganesh. Nonetheless, though, I would say fairly involved in all seven of those kills. Jingu Bang looking to escape the onslaught of Brandon Balls. Has a couple chained in. Likely will only find one stun. That goes on to Jingu Bang. Mort Brooklyn rolling on through from the jungle. That ability will time out Brandon Balls. None, uh, not too worried about that one, I don't think. They might have been able to turn around the damage just because of how far ahead they are. But at this point for Trick Babushka, I mean, you've gotten the Tier 2 tower down in that long lane. Two Tier 2 towers left alive, one in the mid and one in the right. I mean, it's 16 minutes in, Aggro, but you could even start looking towards Fire Giant with how far ahead you are. Absolutely. You've got Sustain from Ra. You, you've got good damage. Data, remember, is huge right now. Level 17. He's four levels up on the enemy soul laner. He's seven levels up on the enemy's support. Day doesn't have to respect anything right now. Doesn't doesn't need to worry about it at all. Dharmic Pillars from Mineral plugged away a little bit of damage on Sops, who will use some of that nice hell hearing healing rather to get himself just a little bit more topped hey, off. She but hears well hearing, too, okay? She does hear well. She she heard five members of Trick Babushka sprinting at her and then turned tail and got out of that one. But with Fury respawning in three seconds, that's likely the target here for Trick Babushka. Might even be able to collapse as Brandon Balls could be baiting a few members of Mech's ID onset into a damage onslaught from Trick Babushka. But instead, it's just going to be the Osiris zone. Oni Fury will be secured here by Trick Babushka. Maybe you trade out a Tier 1 tower if you're Mech's ID onset, but you're getting close to a big-time collapse of the team fight here if you don't get out quickly. And it doesn't look like they're getting out quickly. Mineral first one in. Brandon immediately onto the back line. But Mort has been isolated again. But a big Fear No Evil might help him out. That's a three-man knockup and three-man stun. But nothing comes of it as the eighth kill on the board for Trick Babushka. Sops falls again. Brandon Balls on top of Jingu Bang here who still has some of that mobility to get out alive. So nothing comes of that one either. It's a one kill swing for Trick Babushka. They grab themselves the Oni Fury as well. Jingu Bang turns around, tries to get himself the blue buff. Instead, he only dies. It's the second kill of the game now, or death rather, on that Hoonbots. Mando Warrior turns around, picks up the blue buff to save it from timing out. But in the meantime, a tier two tower has been taken down. Bad to worse here from Exidy Onset. This is the middle lane Phoenix is getting bared down upon. Unlucky that uh, Yuji pulls Diesel out of that ultimate from Shadow Chair, but he was dying one way or the other. Mid Phoenix might be next to go. Mineral finds a nice knock him on a Mando, but Mando gets cleansed by Sops. This Mid Phoenix might be able to stand a little bit longer, but now there's an Oni wave coming through. I don't like its odds. Yeah, it's getting chipped away here. Exploded is the middle lane Phoenix. Just a. A two-time push is really all Trick Babushka needed there. Mid lane Phoenix down 18 and a half minutes into this game. You still have a couple Oni minions on either side as well. I don't know, Agro. I mean, th this is already in that territory where it seems like if you're Mech's Eye Onset, you just kind of have to turtle underneath your Phoenix. But that didn't really pay off for him at all there either. No, they weren't five strong at that point. So maybe that's that fair, does enough. <laughs> but I don't think that's really the case. I mean, you're. I think there's an argument to just going to the fire giant and trying to to cause some havoc there because it's so early. You don't see 19-minute fire giants very often. No. 
that Trick Babushka might take more damage than they expect. They might get a little sloppy on that pull, expecting that you aren't here to defend. But if you lose Jingu Bang here, which looks fairly likely, though. Yeah, he, <laughs> I was going to say, Day should be able to cut him off. You've basically lost all hope at defending there, too. I think uh, I think you're waiting in the Titan room, you know, for uh, for the inevitable at this point, if you're anxiety onset. Yeah, but Agra, they're going to get a tier one tower in the right hand lane. Maybe the minions are going to finally take that down. Anxiety onset, a the the ever so small gold swing of Let's go! deleted. As Trick Babushka snagged themselves the Fire Giant, a purple buff secured by Maxadi Onset as well, but Brandon nice. Ball's not happy about that one. Stunned down, but he's going to move in. Lots of CC onto him, but enough healing in that Osiris might get him out alive as well. But Man, Claps no. is in for the first kill of the game for Maxadi Onset. You got four members with FG pushing down this right side Phoenix. Felt like they actually did need Mando there to blink over the wall just to ensure that Brandon doesn't have an escape. <laughs> Little bit of a misplay by Brandon to, to waltz into four people, but you're hoping for the perfect game for Trick Babushka. Doesn't end up happening. The uh, anxiety onset get get walked, you know, an unintentional walk to, to break up the perfect game, but the no-hitter still seems like it's on the table at this point for Trick Babushka. It's just been so clean. Every other part of their game has, has been nearly perfect. Agra, I think the only thing that stands surprising to me at this point is that Mando Warrior has a one-level lead over Brandon. Yeah, well, he's been giving up on team fights. You know, he just walks around, <laughs> goes to waves, Vamana's around. That's kind of what he's been doing. That's fair. UG does connect on to Mando with the uh, the Naja ultimate. Mando's going to... Use the uh, use the actives and get himself out alive as well. So the Vamana taken low, but not killed off just yet. All three Phoenixes exposed, one taken down. That is in the middle lane. Looks like left side will be the target of aggression here for Trick Babushka. With the Fury up in, in 40 or so seconds, depending on how long the siege takes, you may be able to just knock down that Phoenix. And if you take enough members of Mexidi onset, you could just grab the win. But that was four alts used by Trick Babushka right there, so they have to be a little bit worried. I think you wait around at this point for those ultimates to come back up. You've got Fire Giant for a little bit, another two minutes on that one, so you can wait around until those ultimates are back. Shadow Chair has his, of course, with, with the full CDR build that he has, but everyone else, it'll just be another moment or two. Well, another couple stuns from Mort Brooklyn here. Mineral taken low. Mando, maybe the first chance for him to get aggressive into the back line here. Mort falls one more time this game, and Maxadi Onset, they may have found just a, a small opening there to get aggressive. But when you're this far behind, that quickly is snuffed out. Mort falls again. Left side Phoenix still under attack. Mineral drops down the ultimate. Fear no evil catches onto a few. Big UG is actually on the escape here, but Jingu Bang shuts that one down. Diesel taken away. Brandon Balls grabs the kill. 13 to 2 is where we stand. Make it 14. Left side Phoenix. That one is going to go down as well. And Agro with 50 seconds left on those death timers. This just could be game. Should be able to be game here for Trick Babushka, but they are they don't have a big wave coming, and in fact there's not a wave coming for a little bit. I don't know that they can end here, Dave. It's gonna be close. Well, Mort fresh off respawn immediately hits the gray screen one more time. Still four members, Titan being chipped away. The defense is still in. Two members of Mech Society on set day to remember turns around the damage on the Jingu Bang. Titan taken down. Maybe not quite as clean as they had hoped, but 23 minutes in, Trick Babushka grabbed game number one. Okay, it wasn't that close. I was They, they didn't need the wave, Dave. I, <laughs> I'd forgotten that they were up uh, approximately a million gold in roughly 2 million XP, yes. and uh, that game was over very, very early on. Look, it, it snowballed out of control just from that duo lane getting off to a good start because it sets yeah. Mineral ahead. He rotates over to that right-hand side, and we talk a lot about transitioning leads. How do we take a lead that one lane has and distribute it across the map? That's a perfect example of how to do it. Mineral gets that first blood. It lets him get full cooldown boots and then uses those to rotate over to the blue first blue buff respawn and is able to make a big play there that ends up letting Trick Babushka get Brandon ahead. It got Shadow Chair ahead. It got Yuji ahead. And it just continued from there, man. Impressive, impressive play by Trick Babushka. One or two deaths on their side. I mean, no problem at all. That's That was just clean smite from beginning to end. And one of the deaths coming right at the end of the game. 
uh, on a Phoenix slash Titan dive there, so no sweat on that one. And I kind of liked one point that you brought up during that game, and we sort of saw it come to fruition. Normally, I would say, like, with a Vimana specifically, the Guardian maybe picks up that Curse Donk. With enough healing on their side, Brandon was, was happy, I think, was the way you worded it. Let's grab ourselves a second one. Let's mitigate as much healing as possible. And, and, you know, maybe in a game like this, you have to take everything with a grain of salt just because of how wide that lead was. But that is potentially an oversight there from Exide Onset drafting that much healing. I agree. I think that's something you have to really keep in mind. You can't make the, the counterplay options that are available to your opponents look that much better. One Onk already makes Vamana really, really difficult to navigate in the late game. Two Onks, you're not doing a whole lot, even if you are closer to even than, than what happened right there to Megzai the Onset. Well, you hope that they can find themselves some sort of uh, bounce back here, because as I mentioned, going into game number one, that's brutal. You don't want to go 0-2 on the day, especially with how close set number two was. But we will take a quick break, see if in game number two, Mexadi Onset is able to turn things around, maybe address some what we would call slight issues in the pick and ban phase. So stick around. We got game number two right after this. Well, thank you for sticking around just prior to game number two between Trick Babushka and Mexadi Onset. Still Dolson, still aggro here to talk with you about it. And I, I loved what you brought up there towards the end, right before break, was kind of a clear-cut plan from Trick Babushka to move from that early game lead into the mid game, into the late game. I love seeing it on Ganesh, obviously, for Mineral, but I, I think if nothing else, Trick Babushka have shown in game one that although they are kind of in the middle of this region, you know, this is very early on, so a, a lot of the teams will start to separate themselves. They have shown that when in the right circumstances, they can take advantage of a small lead and make it bigger and eventually grow it into a convincing win. Absolutely. And I think the big thing here in this game for, for Big Zidey Onset is going to be finding a way to not let Mineral be the decider of this game. Because normally I think a lot of the people in chat or, or that are watching don't really think of support as the, a really, really hard competitive role. They think that support is just, the, oh, you know, go press your unmissable CC buttons and that's all you're really good for. Support is really, really difficult to execute at a high level. Yeah. You saw what how, how tough of a time Mort had in that last game. You've got to put Mort on something that's going to get early pressure so that it's easier to play the game. Low pressure gods are usually harder to play in Smite just because the early game, it's so easy to get overrun. Put him on something that's guaranteed to get you pressure. You can kind of hide him that way in the team fights and make sure that he's not falling right. that far behind because that game was, was really, really difficult because you have a Geb that's basically minion number seven in every wave instead of another big god that you have to worry about. Yeah, difficult somehow seems like an understatement still. I mean, more, you know, at times not due to any fault of his own was just kind of being killed on cooldown. Actually, there were moments where he would get a three-man knockup, a big three-man stun, and those were like the only moments where it looked like Mexadi Onset may actually find some kills in those fights. But I agree. I mean, you know, coming into today, I think Geb was like a 9% pick rate, had won all 9% of those games. But I think after what game number one had for, for, for Mort, I think you maybe shift things around and give, give him something a little bit more comfortable that you can make use of. Trick Babushka... More of the same, I think, if you're in that draft. It, it was an interesting composition, as we pointed out, but the puzzle pieces ended up fitting together very, very nicely. First bands, though, starting to come online here. Kukulkan, Kamazots, and Odin taken away. Merlin, Persephone. I think Merlin has started to get banned out more than I'm expecting. I think Persephone and Kukulkan, I'm used to just seeing those two. And then Merlin, usually one of the first two mid laners picked up, but Merlin pretty consistently has been taken away today. Yeah, but his win rate has not been impressive in the games where he does go through, so I think teams are still overvaluing this pick a little bit, but the big thing about Merlin is he doesn't have a whole lot of weak points. There's no point in the game where you're like, oh man, if I had someone else instead of Merlin, we're doing way better here. <laughs> That's just not the case. Merlin has great wave clear early on, his mid-game damage is good, his late game's phenomenal. 
And he's just a really, really strong all-around mage, and I think the teams are just trying to see where else the meta goes in mid if, if Merlin really isn't available. Oh, I asked for more of the same from Trick Babushka, and they're giving me more of the same. They grab Ganesha, Naja, first two off the board, or onto the board, rather, for Trick Babushka. I love that. Yeah, everything seemed to be working for them in game number one. The slight difference, though, is it will be the Scylla instead of the Ra this time around. So while the kits are different, I, I, I guess you could make an argument that the idea is sort of the same between a Ra and a Scylla. Hit your stuff and you do good damage. Yeah, exactly. Especially off of great setup, uh, particularly Naja. Naja Scylla is a, a, a tried and true combo that has always worked very, very well because you can't miss off the Naja ult. It's guaranteed damage every time. Naja is going to take care of 30% of the of the opponent's health bar by himself anyways. So Scylla gets to pretty much guaranteed reset off that ultimate on I'm a Monster. So I, I do love this combination together. I'm a little bit surprised, though, that we see Trick Babushka go with a later game mage because so much of what made them potent in that game was them steamrolling the early game. That's my only concern is where they're going with lower pressure in mid. If that Scylla does in game one, does Scylla make it to that first blue buff invade where Shadow Chair gets the snipe? I don't know. I don't know that he does because he might have spent sure. too long clearing the wave. I think that that is a concern for me is that lower mid pressure. But for the most part, Trick Babushka have the exact same comp. Kernanos would finish it, but instead it's going to be the Hachiman. It's a Perfectly acceptable pick here. I like the Hachiman quite a bit. Yep. I think I might like it more than the Kern, honestly. Trick Babushka have basically the exact same comp, and Megxidee Onset did not counter this low pressure mid laner with a higher pressure one of their own. They went with Thoth, something equally low pressure. So that one concern that I had for Scylla doesn't really concern me that much anymore because Megxidee Onset are going to be on even playing field in terms of sure. clear. Well, I think one of the concerns we maybe had moving into this pick ban phase was. Do we move uh, Mort onto something that he can maybe have a little bit more of an impact on? Agro, I'm not sure if Terra, I mean, I, I think she absolutely has an impact, but maybe a similar impact to like what a Geb would have. Terra is one of those picks that can do very, very well whenever it gets a lead. That ultimate does a lot of damage. Great CC on, on low mobility targets that can give a character like Naja problems because that giant root is difficult for, for Naja to really deal with. But this is a character that usually gets counterpicked by Ganesh. Most of the time, if the enemy team has a Terra, the, the team that still needs their support will go with Ganesh because it's such a great matchup up against the Terra because everything she does is in two stages. i got to place the three, and then I have to dash. I have to place the two, and then I have to reactivate it. Ganesh Silence is going to stop all of that. I'm very surprised to see Mort go with this pick. It's also a, a frankly, it's a harder selection to, to yep. make work well than the Geb, it's a higher execution pick, and, and Mort did not do a lot to inspire confidence with that last Geb game, so we'll see how it goes. Remembering back to game one, it all sort of snowballed from an early kill in the duo lane, so something to keep our eyes on here, see if Trick Babushka is able to capitalize on that. I did note just, just really quickly that four Hand of the Gods were picked up in this game, uh, two for both sides, just maybe trying to, to mitigate the risk of early jungle pressure. But also, yeah, I, I feel it, like I mean, every once in a while, we'll see that picked up just to do your buffs faster. Yeah, it's exactly what it is. It's insurance. That's that's kind of the way to think about it. But it, it's like uh, it's a little bit like insurance in Blackjack, where when you buy it and the dealer does have Blackjack, you feel really smart as Mort, again, oh, no. going to get punished early on in this game. Never got a chance to use his sprint. You feel really smart when you buy insurance, but imagine that that insurance and blackjack would also just pay out a, a smaller percentage even if the dealer doesn't have blackjack. That's basically what it is because you still get some benefit by buying right. Hand of the Gods. Even if they don't invade you, you speed up your clear speed by a second, a second and a half, two seconds for some characters. And that is a huge deal in a competitive setting. Two seconds is an eternity in terms of clear speed. It, it, it can take you, it feels like it takes you so much longer when you don't have it that it's just better to have it and, and not need it because you'll still get some use out of it. Yep. I love that small, quick bit of decision-making from Yuji and Shadow Chair to rotate through. I mean, yeah, it's just the uh, the, the Harpies on the right-hand side of the jungle, but that's just going to slow down Jingu Bang, who's running back this Hoonbots, kind of, you know, with the rest of Mechsidee on set in game one. Didn't have all that great of a time, but, but 
you know, those small advantages, quick decision making is what we've seen out of Trick Babushka. But Agra, I mean, we got to talk about the elephant in the game. Mineral on Ganesh one more time is going to set up first blood. This time it goes to day, Re day to remember again. So still on day to remember, but it's a Hachiman this time around instead of that Kurnimus. And Hachi pushes leads really well with his great mobility. He's got good poke damage with the two. He can hit you from a long range with the one. And he all ends very, very well with the dash and that mounted archery. So that is certainly problematic if you're Diesel. I mean, to be frank with you, Dave, I'm sure that's exactly how it had happened in game number one, is that Mineral and, and Day hit level two first, and then Mineral just dashed and knocked up the, the enemy support, and Mort died for it in game one. And the same thing has happened here. This time around, I wonder if Jingu Bang can can make an earlier rotation to yeah. try and help out and, and get some pressure back to this lane. But I'd imagine that Mineral is going to help on Purple here, back by full boots because he should have enough gold with with that first blood assist and the and the Purple buff invade and all the pressure that they've earned. And then I wouldn't be surprised to see him right back on the enemy blue buff again, just like he was last game. Fair enough, and, and you know I think. We, we brought up Jingu Bang there just, just really quickly. I feel like I, I'm so used to seeing the Hoonbots just just instigate so much pressure and so much offense for a team. I mean, the, the team fighting ability uh, in the Fear No Evil, I, I think, just sets up so much for your team. And, and you know, I, I think last game is almost just an outlier. That one just got out of hand so quickly. Uh, but but what do you want to see out of Jingu Bang here in this early game? I know that you sort of mentioned maybe make a rotation down to that long lane, but but how does he have more of an impact here, especially if we're going to start doing this two people in the mid lane? Well, he can't afford to get picked off without purification beads because he's elected for Blink to start off this game, and that is, that's risky up against a composition that's designed to all-in you off of Naja ult. Yeah. That means Sash is guaranteed Naja ult, which is guarantee death against this composition so first things first jingu bang has to know exactly where yuji is at all times he knows he backed so he's going in now they're gonna look for a kill on the mineral and they're gonna find it mort shuts him down so finally an early kill on the board here from xid onset mineral right back to that mid lane where we maybe expected him to go this time though a fruitless effort instead handing over a kill to xid onset great setup there jingu bang found the rotation we were hoping he would and Maxadi Onset get them one early this game. And that's perfect because he goes, he waits until UG backs. I don't know that they had that information. I believe they did with the ward on top right. UG backs on that ward so they know it's, a, it's an easy engagement. They don't get the beads out from Shadow Chair, which would have been perfect, but pretty close to it. They separate Mineral nicely. Sops is right there with good damage, even through the shell that Mineral has. Well, well played uh, across the board there by Maxadi Onset. It was a three-man collapse up towards the solo lane, but sensing that out is Mando Warrior, so he'll be able to get out alive. And you briefly brought up, you know, some of the relic differences. Obviously, purification beads, the the large priority for Trick Babushka teleport, sort of unnotably on Brandon Balls. That's what you expect. Uh, shell for mineral. Uh, Jingu Bang, of course, went for the blink. And one thing I feel like we we is sort of a, an intermittent pickup, especially for Guardians, is that Heavenly Wings, and that's what we've seen more go towards here. A lot of slows on the enemy team. A, a slow for Mounted Archery on, on Hachiman's ult, Mineral's ultimate is a slow. It can be a big difference maker as Yuji has found softs, but Shadow Chair not close enough. That ring toss misses, but Mineral's yep. got that speed buff. I think oh, he's going to no. be able to catch him here. <laughs> the corner just slowed Sops down enough for Yuji to move in and find the second kill. Good collapse into the red buff side of the Mexadi onset jungle there from Trick Babushka. So Yuji getting in the killing game early here as well. So both junglers setting up something now for their team. You're sitting at about a, call it 1,000 gold lead if you're Trick Babushka. So right off to another great start. But I feel like what we haven't quite seen the same of is that big snowball from this long lane. Mineral is two levels ahead of Mort. I mean, I think that is notable. But by this time in game number one, that lead had grown even further. Yeah, that's that's true, but this is still not a great start from Anxiety Onset, really. Absolutely not. Mando has a little bit more XP than Brandon at this point, but I'd expect, now that Brandon has teleported back and, and is full HP and full mana once again, I'm surprised the lack of blue buff invades here by Trick Babushka, because I don't think the Anxiety Onset did a great job in picks and bans 
of adjusting to the composition that Trick Babushka had. And that's surprising right. because Trick Babushka, the, look, there's a lot of things to be said about, okay, we played really well with this comp. Let's just run it back. What you're basically doing is saying, hey, we taught you how we're going to play this composition, opponents. Here's a free adjustment. We're going to run it back <laughs> and try again. Let's see if you can do better this time around. I think there's an inherent disadvantage in that. But Megxidey Onset did not draft better solo pressure, which I thought was their main problem last game, was how much they fell behind yep. in that solo lane. They pick a Guardian, lower pressure this time around. Yep. They haven't been punished for it yet. Well, maybe in a team fight, Mando Warrior will really be able to put his stamp on this game. Red buff invade last time, set up a kill for big UG. They look for the same this time. But Mexide Onset is going to be able to get out alive without suffering any casualties. This is maybe what I expect, kind of the dance around this Gold Fury. Eight and some change minutes into this game, especially if some kills are going to start steamrolling here. Mort's going to get aggressive. It's not going to find the root onto either member of Trick Babushka. Instead, three members are just going to collapse onto that Terra. Not enough healing to keep Mort Brooklyn alive. Sops is in range to plug away some good long-range damage there. Jingu Bang leaps over the wall. Watch out for that solo lane rotation from Brandon Balls. Will not result in much there, but it is a one-for-one -one trade with Mineral and Mort, both the Guardians, going down. Now, normally, support for support, who cares? It's not a big deal. But when Mort is this far down... And Mineral is really the same level as the enemy jungler. Taking him off the map for a while is, is very, very impactful. Yeah. Still, I think that that is a... They, they kind of scrape together that kill onto Mineral because Mort just too far forward. Dashing, expending one of his two dashes at least, near the, the, the middle of Tier 1 and Tier 2 tower is, is ambitious, to say the least. Uh, he's definitely got to be wary that he's just level 6. He's down quite a bit. Shadow Chair didn't even need to use his ult to, to basically kill him by himself. And you can note, though, I mean, we were a little nervous that after game one, Mort would be a little bit dissuaded from, from getting aggressive on any of these Guardians, and that's just not the case. I mean, looking for something back behind the trick Babushka red buff there didn't quite work out, but as you mentioned, I still think that's a fair trade, a one-for-one, one, but with Mineral so far ahead, maybe a little bit more worthwhile for them. I kind of want to return to a point, though. We talked about Mando Warrior, and, and you're going to pick a Guardian in the solo lane, and, and the pressure's not quite there. But the Xing Chin, I, I think, so good in team fights that if you can kind of maybe even stay even, just keep yourself relevant in this game, you'll be able to have maybe a slight advantage thanks to all the CC that Xing Chin brings. Uh, but he is... Obviously going to get ganked a good bit here and doesn't end up falling then. But but what do you make of that? Mando Warrior moving on to the Shing Chin. Obviously you're not going to have the same lane presence, but but in the team fights you should have a pretty big impact. I mean, before your uh, smite time, Dave, it, Shing Chen was really exclusively a solo laner for a long, right. long time. When he first came out in Season 2, I mean, he was... You think he's strong now. That, that was some nonsense back in the day <laughs> for Shing Chen, but... He he's always really been a solo laner. So not until last year, really, that, that supports and guardians started to you started to see him more in support than you did in solo lane when he was played. And it, it, and I think it works well. It, he's impossible to kill in the one v one. He just has too much mobility, too much sustain with the HP five. It's really really hard to kill this guy. And then he rotates with the level lead, and he still solos the enemy carry, and he's tankier than the enemy solo laner. So he's got a lot of good things going for him, but. It just feels like it might not be in the pick in this comp. Yeah, you can't say the same for Mort here, who has nothing good going for him. I'm a monster. Crashes down, and Shadow Chair is able to grab his second kill of this game. So Mineral continuing the trend of 100% kill participation, but it is the Scylla who is on the board twice now for Shadow Chair. Opting into that Book of Thoth still. I mean, I, we've seen Book of Thoth now picked up first, not for Thoth this time, notably, going Chrono's Pennant instead. But I feel like Scylla is one where I'm used to seeing Chronos Pendant maybe a little bit more, or in that same tree, but Book of Thoth picked up one more time from Shadow Chair. I know a lot of players were liking the, the Chronos Pendant rush on just about everybody towards being the season. Yeah. Now, now is where we kind of come back down to Earth and use our brains a little bit. Let's think about why we're building okay. Chronos Pendant, or, or if we should be building Chronos Pendant on a character like Scylla. And I think Shadow Chair has come to the right conclusion that CDR is not what you want on Scylla. You want the ability to insta-kill people and not right. crush them over and over and over again. This is the much better build. It, it sops 
you can go. I, I thought he was going to, with this start, I thought he was going to go into the Doom Orb. He started Boots 2 and Lost Artifact. That's usually the signal of the old Doom Orb build that we saw all of last year in mid lane. Goes for the Kronos Pendant instead. I think that getting as many dashes as you can off as Thoth is pretty relevant because that dash does damage as opposed to something like Scylla's dash. Doom Orb might have been better. Overall, I, I do think Doom Orb still has a place with this sort of start, but yeah. Sops clearly just wanted a little bit more safety in this game, which which I don't have a whole lot of problem with. Well, Shadow Chair is going to grab Divine Ruin for item number two, technically three, if you throw the boots in that mechs here. So, time to see if a 2-0 Scylla can continue that presence, especially with a little bit more front-loaded damage. Red Buff Invade continues here for Trick Babushka. Windfire Wheels is going to pick up more. The rest of the team is there to support. It is the same exact chain of CC that we've seen two or three times now this game. Set up with Big Yuji. Knock him down with Shadow Chair. The fight will continue, though. Three ultimates down for Trick Babushka, but they still want to take this fight. Sops not enough health to keep him alive there. Brandon Balls is going to move in, continue his onslaught. Two members down from Mexadion, set back to the safety of the Tier 1 and Tier 2 tower, respectively. And this is a big fight for Trick Babushka. Knock down a couple of kills, maybe start off this Gold Fury 13 minutes into the game. Mando's here, though, and he can cause some problems. Shadow Chair avoids it nicely because he doesn't have those beads, but... Gold Fury getting lower. What? Megxidi onset somehow steal that through the crush coming from Shadow Chair. Now, they still get two kills that should have been gold and the kills on top of that. I don't know. Maybe a yeah. tick from Shink General. I, I don't know what. I don't know what stole that, but that's a little bit because unlucky. I mean... Shadow Chair maybe should be having crushed down a little bit earlier, but I feel like he put it down and popped it around the right time. Yeah. Just a just a bad luck situation, I suppose. I feel like Mando was like dead as the Gold Fury died as well, so remains to be seen, but but it is Mech's ID onset that pick up that Gold Fury. Still a 3k gold differential, but it would have been a lot worse had Trick Babushka been able to get the kills and pick up the Gold Fury for themselves there but but just prior to that you can really see the idea and it's actually what you brought up in picks and bands so let's lock one down with big qg windfire wheels is going to bring somebody up to the air mineral just there to drop down the ganesh ultimate as well but more often than not it's just shadow chair that needs to follow up with the silla ultimate to immediately delete a target and they've been doing that on cooldown and it's been working out it's it's easy kills. Then and, and now with the level lead that, that Shadow Chair has, it's it's pretty much impossible for this to go wrong on Demort. He's level ten. That's a five level differential between him and Shadow Chair. Shadow Chair has a good amount of pen now. I love the Obsidian Shard pickup. I know everyone thinks coin is is the pickup, but I think Obsidian Shard in this type of composition is perfect. You're designed to kill the tank on my first ability. I want to kill him off of my I'm a monster every single time. What's going to let me do that the easiest? Getting 10% extra pen off the Obsidian Shard passive. I think it's smart building from Shadow Chair. Now you've got the Erendite. It's going to make UG deal even more damage. I, I, I love it. I love it for Trick Babushka. Here's the fight. The setup still there from UG on to Mort this time. But Shadow Chair is locked down in the back line. Can't follow up. Jingu Bang was in range. And Trick Babushka, they are low. The follow-up could be on from Exadion set. Jump over the wall from Diesel. Jingu Bang moves through. Turns around the damage onto Shadow Chair. I'm a monster. Does not find the kill this time. What a collapse from Exadion set. Trick Babushka maybe a little bit too confident. And the kill goes back for Blue. So that's how you might be wondering, okay, how do they stop such a, an insane wombo combo? Yes. How do you can't peel that you can't peel Yuji off the, the Terra. We can't stop that damage from coming through the only way to stop it is to get on top of shadow chair during during that ultimate for Najah because shadow chair you know where his eyes are going to be you know where he wants to be so you can make a pretty easy assumption on how we can stop him in that moment Jingu Bang knows that he doesn't have any purification beads now if shadow chair just goes up in the alt and sits and waits there maybe he just dies out right to Jingu Bang so he can't really use that ultimate for CC immunity that's a really smart identification of what needed to happen. You're not you're not peeling for the Terra by stopping the the UG ultimate. You're peeling by stopping Shadow Chair's damage off that ultimate. And that time it goes way better from Anxiety Onset. Well, it's looking like one of the largest discrepancies in the game where the, where they're 
technically are two level differences in the solo lane. Now a three level difference in that guardian role, two level difference in the hunter role. I feel like the hunter role kind of stands out most to me. That day to remember is two levels ahead of diesel here when there's just been so little presence. I mean, day to remember has one more kill, one more assist, but I, I guess he's just been out farming. Part of that is that first blood bounty. It all kind of goes back to That's that true. at the end of the day, but certainly the uh, he, day has just played very well. Well, it's Pyromancer started here very low. Nobody's finished it off yet. Trick Babushka finally does so. Mando Warrior uses maybe the last bit of his mana to just jump out of that one. Trick Babushka electing just to take the Pyro and try to get back. Brandon Balls will have his back stopped here. But he is healthy enough and sustaining enough that he'll get out alive as well. So what could have been a risky start to that Pyromancer aggro does end up coming for free here for Trick Babushka. Scary stuff, and right as I'm saying how well Day's playing, he has a really late purification beads in order to almost die to Mando Warrior's ultimate. But it, no harm, no foul. He beads eventually. Trick Babushka still secure the Pyromancer. All's well that ends well. well. That's a good fear. No evil into the mid lane. Shadow Chair sent one way, Mineral the other. Jingu Bang follows up his own ult to the tune of one kill on a Shadow Chair who has now died twice in this game. 4 2 and 1 on that Scylla. But Jingu Bang finally taking one kill for that Hoonbots. Still could be a fight on. Oni Fury just now spawning. Mando Warriors locked down onto big UG. Mineral is going to try to peel for his team. Sops deletes UG here. A couple spun around and tossed to the side for Trick Babushka. Jingu Bang has plenty of damage to get rid of Mineral. Now Brandon Balls, he's locked in with four members of Mexadi Onset. Not enough sustain is going to keep you alive there. Mexadi Onset, a four kill swing. And they are right back in this game. Man, that is uh, a difference maker for sure. This could be Fire Giant. I mean, Shadow Chair's yeah. coming up, but Data Remember sticking on that left hand side. This should be Fire. It all goes back to Shadow Chair losing his life in mid, then a, a little bit of a lazy back. But all this comes from really good ward coverage from Anxiety Onset. They know the Trick Babushia, don't know that they're coming around that right hand side so they can gank Shadow Chair. They see that Mineral's trying to reset on top left mid, so they can pick him there. Then Yuji doesn't use the ultimate, maybe because that pillar actually stopped to where Yuji wanted to go with that ult and kind of forced him back. But that's a that's a season seven team fight right there where yeah. last year, pretty easy escape for Yuji. We just ult down and go out that way. Now you've got those little pockets. That's not an option anymore. All of a sudden, Anxiety Onset, they're effectively in the lead. I know that Trick Babushka they still yep. have an experience lead in places. They still have a slight gold lead. Fire Giant's worth a lot of effective gold, and there's a lot of gold available on the map for Anxiety Onset to take in the form of some of these towers. Trick Babushka certainly can fight into it. I wouldn't be giving up tier twos at this point, but I'd be letting all the tier ones go. It's just not worth your not worth your time, not worth losing a huge lead to try and go and defend a tier one tower. That doesn't mean that much. I think Data Remember there at least did a, a, a good job of realizing that Fire Giant's going to go down. All the members that are alive from Anxiety Onset are going to need to be there in order to, to get it down. And pushes down Tier 2 Tower in, uh, in the long lane there. And then also gets the Oni Fury. So if nothing else, Data Remember, despite probably an intangible lead from Anxiety Onset, I think a smart kind of split push play there from Data Remember help maybe mitigate some of what the Fire Giant is going to bring. Because he also makes sure that Megxiety Onset isn't getting that Oni Fury at the same time. He, he pushes the wave really deep, so the Megxiety Onset have to make sure they have to go and respect it, have to go and push that wave out, and it sets him up to go and get Oni Fury very nicely. I mean, Fire Giant is on five members of Megxiety Onset, but they only have it for about two more minutes, so they're, they're going to get this Tier 1 in mid for sure. Trick Babushka can certainly be here in time to defend the Tier 2 if they're quick with their, quick with their purchasing and try and get here in time. Well, Yuji will be the slowest to return to this fight, but slowest does not necessarily mean slow when the rest of your team is quick. Tier 2 tower taken very low, and it looks like we'll be secured here. The fight, though, rages on. That's a big fear no evil from Jingu Bang. Sops is going to charge up the ultimate, look to plug away. A little bit of damage, throw some out. Mando Warrior tosses one back, and that's Mineral oh! Day. Remember, nearly deleted, but Shadow Chair is... 
Sops has poured so much damage into this fight. Brandon Ball stunned down. Mando Warrior is going to get that kill. Middle lane Phoenix is going to start being knocked around by Mech Side Onset. Still five members strong. Trick Babushka down to three. Wow, are they going to try and end here? I mean, they've got a wave coming. Fire Giant still on them for a minute. They might be able to here, Dave. And Mineral gets stunned down, but Big UG is now back from base. Has to burn his actives. They're going to turn their attention over to the Titan. Manda Warrior's low. So is Mort. It looks like they might be thinking twice about this one. If you can get a kill on Amanda Warrior, I think you're happy here. If you're Trick Babushka, you stun him down. Day to remember, he snags the kill. Still in the back line is Jingu Bang, but silenced out from inflicting any further pain as Mineral tosses up the Ganesh silence. And out goes Mexidi Onset. They thought about the end. Instead, they found a few kills, but it is still an open Titan as the mid lane Phoenix falls. Man, what a great ult from Sops. That's the dream scenario. He hit both right? backliners with the same ult. But Shadow Chair has got to be a little bit more aware. I mean, he, he eats a lot of damage, had both relics up at that time. Use the Aegis. Uh, you, you just got to keep your eye on that on that Thoth at all times. I think he let his eye slip. And, and really, Brandon should be on him. Brandon's in the middle of three other people, but not hitting Sops at that time. Sops is the one you have to worry the most about from that range. Brandon's got to do a better job of keeping track of him, and both Day and Shadow Chair could have used relics better. Whoa, Diesel, speaking of using relics, has to use both to stay alive there. Beads, Aegis, both used. Trick Babushka, take that as their cue to move in. Nice sash from Big UG to move in. Get rid of the Mexidi onset hunter. So what looked great a moment ago suddenly has been kind of a sloppy back off. It, it sort of continued out of the Trick Babushka base. Suddenly middle lane tier two tower is under attack. Whirlwind of Rage and Steel finds nothing but air. Mando Warrior chunked away, and it's going to be the mid lane tier 2 tower taken down. So while the mid lane Phoenix is missing here from Mexidi Onset, you got two open Phoenixes if you are Mexidi Onset. UG dodges that ultimate this time around, but has to just buy time because he's getting too low. Jingu Bang finds Mineral by himself. Sops finally finishes off that solo kill. And UG just took a fight where he didn't have enough mana to really continue in the long term. Should have let Sops back, bro. Agro, this has been a, a five minute fight. I, I don't think it stopped since Mexidi Onset tried to turn and run from Trick Babushka's base, but now three members down from the team with the open Titan. Oof. Fire Giant is respawning, Fe or Fire Giant is respawned. Fury will be up in 20 seconds. So this is sort of that area where Mexidi Onset, they can put out some deep wards and really set up for this next FG. I don't know what uh, Sops' keybinds are in order to, to hit his beads. I don't know if he was trying to laugh spam. He's been doing that a little bit. <laughs> I don't know if he was VGSing in the shop, fat fingered it, whatever. But front. no beads on Sops is pretty relevant. But it looks like Trick Babushka, without a frontliner, can't really face check on this fire giant. So Magsidey Onset's going to get another crack at ending the game with an FG buff. Might turn their attention to the Pyromancer after three quarters of the way towards respawning is that middle lane phoenix there's a primal fury available as well should mexidi onset choose to move there just now technically if you look at xp and gold crossing that threshold that puts mexidi onset in the lead but i think just the flow of this game has had mexidi onset in the lead for the last five or so minutes still tier one and tier two tower up in that long lane but instead they're going to grab this tier two in the right lane and open up another phoenix Mid Phoenix is going to be respawning pretty shortly here for Trick Babushka. You should absolutely be ready to defend that, especially if Shadow Chair has that information that stops no beads for a little bit so far. By the way, take a look at those player damage charts. Scylla all the way at the bottom after after a pretty solid start. It's just really, really hard well, to aggro. get. Okay, go ahead, Dave. Uh, Mort is beneath her, right? So not all the way at the bottom. Second to bottom, right? Okay, so Dave, you're, you slam a ranked Q, okay? You're, you're, you're slamming Qs all day, all right? You're, you're playing Ganesh, yeah, right. you're doing well. Oh you're, God, you, yeah. you end the game, this was like yesterday, you lose. Right? Your mid laner has less damage than you, but more than the enemy support. Are you thinking to yourself, yeah, he did enough. He's not the last member. He's not no, cause literally no, no tested. This isn't my game, damage. right? <laughs> right, okay. But uh, I think the parallel still still connects here for me. No, uh, that, that's not enough. Correct. That's not enough damage. That's that's the the devil's advocate in Dave trying to, to pull something there. But I agree, I, not enough to be just above 
Mork, who has died five times this game. Left side Phoenix, under attack, potentially looking for a dive, is Mexide Onset. Plenty of damage for Sops just to poke down Trip Babushka. Mid lane, or left side Phoenix now being chipped away. Mineral is going to drop the Ganesh ultimate. Oh. One more snipe on the day to remember. Sops doesn't miss. And four members alive for Trick Babushka. That could become only three if this onslaught continues. Brandon Ball's stunned down. Hu Yi ultimate rains down from Diesel. Brandon Ball's back to base for about another minute. Whirlwind of Rage and Steel from Mando Warrior does not connect. That is a very low Shing Chin. Titan, though. Started up now by Mexide Onset. Down to half health. Two members left alive for Trick Babushka Aggro. I don't think they have it in a Mexide Onset. They turn this game around and tie up the set. What a game by Sops, man. I mean, just a couple key snipes. Jingu Bang found yeah. great alt after great alt in these team fights as well. A lot of credit goes to him. And Mort got punished early, but was able to stay safe later on. Feel like there's got to be an adjustment at some point by uh, by Trick Babushka here. Someone has got to stop Sops in these team fights. You cannot let him free cast as much as they did in that game. Yeah, it's hard to lose a game when you are at least hitting day to remember with your snipe every single time as a Thoth. And then every once in a while we saw him hitting the Scylla as well. I mean, he was basically getting the two ideal targets. In most of these fights, Shadow Chair, I think, is maybe the most notable turn here on that Scylla. Started off 2-0 and early in this game, ended up at 4-4. Four and four. Jengu Bang, I think, a much better performance on the Hoonbats as well. After a rough game number one in this set, improves to 6-0-8 yep. here on the same god. He, he played great on this Hunbats. I mean, 6-0 and is impressive. He did, he did not get punished at all by Yuji for not having beads until level 12. He did 24,000 player damage, by far the most yeah, in this game. So, I mean, you really look at that mid-jungle combination by Megxiety Onset, and you got to give them a lot of credit. Mando did his job, mitigated a lot of damage, took a lot of damage, was in the midst of these team fights. Here's this Gold Fury steal. It, was it Ching Chen's auto attack, or was it a, a one tick? I don't know. I didn't even see it on the replay, but right. it, it's still impressive. And a little bit lucky that he ends up getting that one. And that really changes a lot of that game in my mind, Dave. If that, if that Gold Fury goes the way that's true. of Trick Babushka, that's a whole lot of extra gold that they get. They get to keep that momentum rolling. That's more XP. Maybe they end up winning that game with that Snowball. Because the Snowball was, was going down the hill. It was rolling. It just at some point hit a rock and came to pieces. I'm trying to see, okay, so that was where he was spamming laugh, and I was wondering if the purification beads would go on cooldown at the end of that one, but you're right. That Gold Fury steal is right on the back end of what was a 2-3 kill advantage fight for Trick Babushka, but I absolutely love it. I think the, the right way to end that replay package is with Sops on that Thoth. I mean, where so much was going right for Mexide Onset this game, it just seemed like Sops wasn't going to miss. And especially, I mean, Doug did a great job of, of just riding along with Sops in two big team fights. How much damage did he take in both of those replays where we were watching him from the third person? Zero. Literal zero. Yep. He got to stand there. He didn't even throw out his one. He's not dashing and then turning around and ulting. He's not using a relic, still finding the ult. He's just sitting there charging up, waiting for the perfect moment. Credit goes to Sops still. I mean, he's got to be accurate in that moment. But I think a lot of mid players would love to have that kind of time. That's credit to Mando, that's credit to Mort, that's credit to the front line and Jingu Bang. Yep. But at some point, there's got to be someone on that Thoth. You can't let him just sit there and, and wait for the perfect moment. Well, Agro, if you've been loving this Sunday smite, there's certainly no Sunday scaries here. This set goes on. Mexadi Onset, Trick, Babu, Sugar. We're going to have game number three for you right after this. And just like that, we are back into the fun time. That is game number three between Mexide Onset and Trick Babushka. Still Dolson, still Aggro. And as if we deserved anything else, Aggro, we've got a game number three here between two teams that, you know, despite wins towards the end, going heavily one way or the other, have been pretty evenly matched. Yeah, I mean, game one was pretty handily in favor of Trick Babushka, and it looked like game two right. was going the same way until two team fights really go poorly and then another team fight after that ends up snops hitting or sops rather hitting a double snipe 
Then he snipes Data Remember again on left side Phoenix. All of those fights were looking okay, but I think that we got to make sure that Trick Babushka have a solo laner that can get on top of Sops this time around if he goes with something like the Thoth again. And ultimately, just keep running through Mineral because he's been killing it so far. I agree, and I think that's my question for Trick Babushka moving into picks and bans is that, I mean, a very similar run back to their game one composition. In Agra, it looked like they were going to win it until that gold yep. fury got stolen away against all odds they got three kills and nearly got a gold fury it looked like that type of composition was going to work again for trick babushka so my now curiosity is if they try to run it a third time here in this set i mean a lot of it from mineral on that ganesh i don't know if it's really bannable at this point if you're mech the onset there, there's too much other priority i think in, in the ban column there's going to be Shing Chin banned out. Maybe that's the most notable to look at here by Trick Babushka. I mean, for me, let, let's just get Shadow Chair on not Scylla. It just did not work <laughs> that game, man. I mean, I, I feel like I'm Stephen A. Smith out here. You scream it into the void. Lay off the Scylla. We don't need it anymore. It, I, I, I've had enough when it comes to the Scylla, bro. If you're not securing objectives, why are you picking the character? It's just, the raw works so well. Let's let's go with that. I, I like the sound of that a little bit more. I like the look of this. Trick Babushka sure. taking that Hunbats away from Jingu Bang. He played it so well last game. Really, really carried a lot of these engagements. I think this is a good look for them in that first pick slot. And can still do a lot of the same things that they were doing with that Naja Ganesh combo. I think it doesn't change their overall comp. Yeah, moving away from that Naja for the first time in this set. And forcing Mexadi on set to a different jungler for the first time in this set. Agro, we, we've had some conversations about this Merlin. I mean, obviously, one of the best mid laners in the game, but that win rate has you a little bit concerned. I, I think so, but I mean, he's, he's still a really, really strong mage. You can make the argument that teams that are underdogs are picking him, and you know, it's not the god's fault; it's it's the operator fault. I think that there's certainly a lot of uh, a lot of merit to that. Right. Certainly worth a pick. Do I think he's the best character in the game? Definitely not. I still think there are a lot of games where you just don't end up feeling that impactful on that god, but it certainly has the potential to, to win you games. His, his mm -hmm. siege defense is so, so good, and sieging is hard right now in Season 7, so picking those gods that are good on siege defenses, Kuku Khan is certainly one of them, Merlin is another one, so if one of them is going to be banned, pick the other. Makes sense to me. Yeah, not the god, the operator, or not the wand, the wizard. If we're uh, yeah. or not the wizard, the one. I don't know. I got it all turned around. We're talking about Merlin here. He's a wizard in some <laughs> universe. That makes sense. You're, you're going to get your wish, though. Yeah, no, uh, I'm with you. Yeah. Tri Trick Babushka is not going to be playing Scylla in the mid lane because Mexadi Onset do them the favor. Ban away that Scylla. So it's maybe going to be this Giannis. And there's something about these skill shot heavy mid laners are getting picked up today. Shadow Chair is like, bro, I want to. Okay, it goes with the raw. I was going to say, he's like, bro, Same I want to make right? sure that I have. The hardest chance of dealing effective damage in this game while hovering that Giannis. But he does end up going with the raw and a chalk pickup from Anxiety Onset that you imagine is going to be there in that soul lane for Mando Warrior. It's it's a god that can defend his blue a little bit better. I love the raw alongside the Athena taunt. You get easy, easy setup there. I like it a lot more than the Giannis. I like the raw this time around. I think the Trick Babushka have a very similar comp to what they've had, but with some different picks. You've got a, a Achilles right there that can help Athena kill frontliners. I think Trick Babushka came away with a really good one. Oh, hey, Agro. How does game three sound to you to decide this one for the third and sure. final time today in the NASCC? I am curious, though, about this chalk because I, I feel like in the, the few games that we've seen him, still in that single digit pick rate, 0% bandata. I, I would be more surprised if there was even a 1% in the ban column for Chalk. I, I feel like when I'm looking at a Chalk, I, I'm used to seeing them kind of assert pressure in that solo lane, but it's how can you convert that into presence in the rest of the game that I always feel like is the question that I'm asking. Yeah, when I see a Chalk on the enemy team as a mid laner, I go, okay, so here's how this is going to happen in team fights. Um, he's going to throw his axe. It's going to do 20-ish percent of my HP. Then um, then I'm going to keep on walking. He's going to make that giant area slow. And as long as it's just the chalk, uh, I just keep walking. And then he might ult. <laughs> I'll press Aegis if I, if I need to. Sure. I'm fine with that. And then I, um, I keep walking after that. And chalk goes, hey, wait. I, 
Well, come C back. Come back. And I go, oh, no, I'm good. And I just walk my way out of the team fight. Chalk is one of those soul laners right. that you're never really scared of. He can get ahead and be really, really difficult to deal with. And against Ra in particular, it is a god that can get, struggle to get away from Chalk. But Wukong maybe makes a little bit more sense to me there if you really just want to be that annoying factor in the back line. Yeah. I, I just don't see a lot of compositions where I go, man, you know what would really, really work here? Chalk. Like, we're, we're missing Chalk <laughs> in this team composition. And I think that that's where that god feels a little bit flat for me is there's no point where I think that he is the best available selection right, right now. It just doesn't, I just don't think that composition exists. Fair enough. I appreciate you guys sticking with us. Quick pause before we jump back into the decider game number three. I mean, you, you sort of mentioned it though. I mean, he, he is able to do, Chalk being he, is able to do a, a sneaky bit of damage early in sure. these games. I didn't quite get the look at the solo lane. I believed it was Achilles or maybe the yep. Athena. So it is Achilles going really up close. against that chalk. What do you make of that matchup at least? I mean, I, I know you sort of mentioned his rotation potential in the middle lane. What do you make of an Achilles up against the chalk? It, it should be Achilles favored for sure. Chalk is thought of as this early lane pressure bully and I, I just don't see it. He doesn't clear the wave effectively until level six. Le level level right. three, he gets better if he wants to skip a point in his heal and, and put two points in the one. But that gets risky. feel like it's really not until level six you got, you've got three points in the one that you really start doing good damage. And at that point, Brandon's going to be doing a lot of damage to you overall. I think that, I mean, Chalk does have the attack speed slow on the three again, so... Maybe he's good against these attack speed compositions, but even then, I'd, I I would just rather have a different character that can withstand that amount of pressure. Chalk is is really not that dude at this point. Well, McSidey Onset need Chalk to do well here today to avoid going out 0 for 2, and especially in another game three. I mean, you go to two game threes, you don't win either. That's got to be tough. Mando Warrior maybe ban or uh, baiting in Brandon Balls here. Not enough damage to turn around and get rid of Mando Warrior. The early stun from Thor, you, you think he's coming at you at level five, but this time the level three gank from Jingu Bang, that's good for first blood. Still some action in the long lane as well, but it looks like the tier one tower just enough in range to get Trick Babushka out safely. But Mexidi Onset, they find the level three gank from the Thor and pick up first play. Man, perfect bait by Mando. G gets low, but not low enough to where Brandon can just all in him with some auto attacks. And Jingu Bang has been red hot since game two. That was perfect. He, he blocks off yep. the escape path, gets the stun, lands the double tap, teleports in at the right time. That was, that was clean mechs. It's pretty easy to put put that character on the wrong side of Thorwall, but not the case there for Jingu Bang and sets himself up and lets Mando kind of stay afloat in this lane. I agree, and especially when uh, I mentioned it briefly, you're expecting that Thor to come in at level five once he's got his ultimate online. Uh, you don't expect the level three gank, I think, all that often, especially not in the solo lane, but it is Brandon Balls who had a, a pretty large, I would say, health lead up to that point, and I don't know. I'd like to think that in those moments, maybe I'm wary of a gank coming in, the fact that Mando Warrior stuck around, but I, I see somebody that low health, no chance I'm turning around and, and not trying to get the kill, right? I mean, there's no oh, yeah. way I'm going to be... The eyes go red, that one. The but, eyes go red. It, it, you're, you're seeing blood, and you, and you want to get that solo kill, especially in solo lane, right? I mean, it's such a... Yeah. It's a show of dominance to, to get that solo kill <laughs> early on in the game. You got to do it. I, I respect it. I respect it. It's just, uh, you know, Jingu Bang doesn't respect it. He does not respect the 1v1, and that's his job, to be a jerk as a jungler. Yeah, right. As you shouldn't, I think, especially right. if you're that Thor. Now is the time where you need to put your stamp on this game, and he's done so at least. He is probably a half level ahead, rather, of Big UG. And maybe that's where this game needs to start to flow through if you're Mexidi Onset. I mean, you've, you've gotten your Thor just a little bit ahead, and... Jingu Bang seems to have the same idea. Anvil of Dawn slams down, catches Big Yuji this time, but the leap is there. Double tap just out of range. The aggression continues from Jingu Bang. Big Yuji taken very, very low. Healthy enough to get his speed, but still a little shaken up. A little surprised that Jingu Bang, maybe he hammered into range. I didn't quite see how he got to that yeah. position, but he should 
be checking to see what relic Yuji has. If you know the enemy doesn't have any beads, you're full comboing, which is landing, auto attack, hammer, wall, auto attack, spin. That'll one-shot you at this point in the game. Doesn't go for that. Instead, just tries to play it slower and doesn't end up getting the kill because of it. Well, the bait was on around that blue buff and the global uh, ultimate of mineral there is going to come to save the day. Brandon Balls does end up snacking up his blue buff. I think that this is this is more aggression and fighting and presence in the solo lane than I've seen maybe all set combined. It's all really on the back end of, of I guess, some aggression that, that we've saw, seen from Jingu Bang. You, you get a, a slight edge there in that solo lane, and apparently everyone now is wanting to fight. Yeah, it's it's usually you want to play around the, lead, the, the lane that you set ahead, right. but especially knowing Yuji is super low and it just uses ultimate, you can't really make that work too well. Yuji's still there. You think that we're going to get it. Mineral's ultimate is there to stop that aggression pretty, pretty quickly. I'm looking for how well Yuji can, can use his blink aggressively. We already saw him get nearly insta-killed off that Thor ult once. We'll see if Jingyu Bang can find him again and, and not let Yuji be using that relic choice. Saw it. Jingu Bang used that effectively last game in a matchup where not having beads can be really, really punishing. Yuji's turn to try and do the same thing. Well, it's a 1,000 gold lead for Maxiety on set here. Thanks in large part due to that first blood from Jingu Bang. And, and I loved what I saw. I mean, uh, immediately seeing a small opening, taking it with that Thor. Mineral, though, has seen an opening of his own. Is going to try to taunt in more Brooklyn here. Does so, but not enough follow-up three-man dance around the mid lane continues. And I am curious to see, speaking of, of taunts for Mineral, what kind of an impact this Athena can have on this game. I, I think we've seen her start to rotate to a lot of different roles, and I think she's got a pretty important role to play here with, with the global ultimate being so important and, and plenty of CC on her side. Jengu Bang gonna try and find it all, and they might be stacked up for him, a triple dunk for the Thor. Merlin damage on top of that, and somehow, Everyone is still alive. How does that happen? Yeah, you got two red health bars on Trick Babushka. The stun is there. Big Yuji, unfortunately, can't escape. Jingu Bang has no health, but also no mana. Brandon Balls thinks twice about chasing that one too far. Crash down from Mando Warrior. Silence is there. Mineral rejoins the fight one more time. Soft's taken low. Back behind the blue buff he goes. Brandon Balls collapses for his second kill of this game. Finally, some of those low health bars taken advantage of. Trick Babushka, they're able to turn around a couple kills. Man, I don't know how how Trick Babushka don't lose a bunch of members yeah. in that moment. Sop's just not doing quite enough damage in that little area. Can, Doug, can we actually, whenever you get a chance, see what Sops is leveling? I wonder if he has a bunch of points in the two and hasn't put enough points in that one quite yet. Because it feels like Mineral might have had, or Sops rather, might have had a whole bunch of points in the two, which is common to see whenever you are playing Merlin because you want to clear the wave more often. Now it looks like he split. This is this is the way that a lot of mid laners also do it, is, is the split. is Sops, no beads, Shadow Chair way late on that ultimate, but they should still be able to get him. No beads, no health, no life for Sops as he's gray screened for another 22 or so seconds. Nice rotation there from Trick Babushka, but now Diesel. He's in, and he wants to fight. Jingu Bang takes the hammer forward, but Trick Babushka just a little bit, or, or, Mex or Trick Babushka, rather, are just a little bit too quick. Mexidi onset, they lose one, and the disengage is nice from Trick Babushka to get out with just the one. Looks like Mineral doesn't have a whole lot of points in the taunt quite yet. His Shadow Chair walled off twice between Mort and Jingu Bang, wow. and <laughs> goodbye, Shadow Chair. No beads for him available, so he's toasted. Just about every time, but I think he's dead to rights, even if he has the beads. Really good wall once more by Jingu Bang. And actually, Mineral does have a lot of points in the two. Feels like it hasn't lasted super long. I noticed that in mid, but that's because Mort has the the reinforced grease. So he has 20% crowd control reduction. That's a huge deal against Athena Comps. I love that pickup for him in this game. But even the one on Sops, uh, Shadow Chair must have been even later than I thought, because normally with, with three or four points in that in that taunt, you should be killing him guaranteed with that yep. snipe. Does that surprise you, though? I mean, obviously, discussion to be had around so many points in that two for Mineral. I mean, in an ideal world or in a different world, 
do you see those points spread out elsewhere? No, I, I don't, because you're picking Athena to, it, it, at least the Athena support in this style of composition, you're picking Athena to kill people off taunt every time, and I know that the three does a lot of damage, the one yeah. I think might go down in cooldown as you level it, so that is attractive to level early. Your job is not to deal the damage, as Athena. Your job is to let other people deal the damage. Keep them taunted for as long as possible. The, the difference, the easiest way to think about it, in my mind, is... Oh, I might not get a chance to explain. Is Jingu Bang going to try and find Shadow Chair, I imagine, but ends up with Mineral. Catches him before he dashes, but too late on the wall that time around. Mort's still here, though. There is the taunt. Mineral still alive is the jump there. Mineral gets out alive within an inch of his life, and then one final dash underneath that Tier 2 tower. Jingu Bang turned his attention to the Trick Babushka support, but... They come up empty-handed because of it. Three ultimates down from Exidy on set. Now three ultimates down for Trick Babushka. Airstrike through, puts Diesel in an awkward spot, and Data, remember, capitalizes. Suddenly, Mort gets taken low as well. Trick Babushka find themselves a couple. Execute range for Brandon Balls, and he finds it. Three members down from Exidy on set. Mando Warrior, he's left alone with a few. He's going to drop an ult of his own beads. Used by Data Remember to get out alive here. Mendo Warrior won't find the kill, instead finds a taunt around the other corner as Mineral has now rejoined this fight. Enough damage here, I think, from Trick Babushka to grab the kill. Brandon Balls grabs his fourth, and it's looking like a Gold Fury as well. Really good use of CC by Trick Babushka and Megzadi Onset. Just go in one by one. Eventually, it's just Mando Warrior left alive, and not a whole lot he can do in that position, but... Just a good rotation by Brandon. You see the difference. I mean, Sops gets a little bit low. Brandon's able to finish him off. Meanwhile, Mando Warrior lives for an eternity, but doesn't deal enough damage even to the half-health Jing Wei to eventually kill her. And that's just the kit. I don't think that Mando played that poorly by any stretch. It's just that he used what's available to his god and doesn't feel like that's quite enough in yep. that moment in order to get the job done. And I think that's a massive swing for Trick Babushka. They had the XP, j just a nudge on their side, but next ID onset were technically ahead in gold again just by a few hundred. But now we see that swing up, still just a few hundred, but Trick Babushka leading in both categories here. And a lot of the offensive presence they've had is around this Achilles. Mineral still assisting in all seven of the kills. So even despite not being on the Ganesh, 100% kill participation on the Athena. But now the question is, how well can Brandon Balls convert this 12 minute, 45 second, four kill lead over to the rest of his team? I feel like you certainly have that potential just if you start to group up and use that raw healing to your advantage. That's, that's one of the big things about this character is that, yes, he's got the long range damage. He's got a great snipe. But really the big thing for him is, is this ability to sustain up in between engagements. There's already some good anti-heal there for Jingu Bang. He's gone with the Brawler's Beat Stick. But I love this pickup by Brandon. He goes with the Kadushia Shield. That means that he's going to be getting increased healing during combat. That's going to help him out, not only from Ra, but also from his own two, which is a great source of healing for Achilles. Helps boost up those numbers and keep him in these fights easier. They got to pump those numbers up, and they're going to try to pump the kill numbers up here. Trick Babushka getting aggressed upon. Jingu Bang has to use the ultimate to disengage himself from what could have been a dive, but now he re-engages into the back line onto Big Yuji. The two-tap is there, and Jingu Bang has turned around this fight. He is still low. Execute from Brandon Balls makes that four-kill performance at least a five for the time being. Mineral is stunned, and Mort is going to try to escape alive. The health bar is entering the red territory. Diesel trying to escape, but Data Remember has the gap closed. Mort will escape with his life unless he tries to re-engage here. Sops will do the same, but it's a two-kill swing one more time for Trick Babushka. I mean, Jingu Bang gets awfully aggressive as another dash taunt for Mineral. Sops late on the beads, and Brandon stunned nicely by Mort. Good play by Mort there to save his mid laner's life. But Jingu Bang, I mean, he decides to go back in, which is understandable. He knows that he's got the level lead. He knows that Yuji doesn't have his beats quite yet. So he's he's stuck in that CC. But he waits so long to use the hammer in that moment. You're either committing with hammer or you're not. And you have to make that decision <laughs> as you're landing to know that if you're going to full combo and kill the dude and try and run out, or we're just landing, getting damage, and then hammering away. I think the damage that Jingu Bang did surprised himself. 
and then goes, oh, I can kill him if I commit the hammer. But by that time, it, he's walked down further. It makes it easier for Brandon to rotate around the back of that team fight and pick him off pretty easily. I think if Jingu's just is more decisive there, he, he might get that kill and get away. Well, he is decisive that he is trying to dive or, or, or trying to pour enough damage into Shadow Chair to make him go back to base, which he will at least succeed. And, and I think those, I mean, maybe you call them mistakes or, or moments of hesitation is maybe a better way of phrasing it for Jingu Bang are probably, you know, kind of doubly impactful where he has three of the four kills and then also one of the assists. I mean, Thor, just numbers wise, is the most fed member of your team right now. And if you're Max Adi Onset, you, you need that to be a consistent and potent form of offensive aggression. Uh, on the flip side, though, I mean, technically five kills are, are for Brandon Balls on, on Trick Babushka, but Data Remember at 202 has a couple stacks on that Rage, compounds more so with this Jing Wei. I mean, there's technically maybe more to be afraid of on Trick Babushka than there is on Max Adi Onset right now. And there's that constant threat of Athena Taunt into Raw 1 4. Right. You're dead. And, that, and I think that that pressure that it gets exerted on you, knowing that you're one easy-to-land CC away from death, makes it a lot harder to, to play around these team fights and just rotate around the map effectively. And, that, and that's the advantage of having someone like Athena on your team. It, it's kills where she goes as long as they don't have relics. Well, despite not being a, a widespread source of offense from Exide Onsa, you, you do have to be careful by their composition, especially if Jingu Bang lands that stun, the double tap with the hammer still can almost 100 to zero any of the squishy members. Diesel is one of those squishy members. Brandon Balls is going to move forward, and Brandon Balls is joined to this fight here. Lands some damage with the ult, but it's Mineral instead who will finish up the kill. Jingu Bang takes to the skies, lands down, grabs the stun on a shadow chair that he immediately beads out. Misses the second stun, but doesn't miss the hammer and he grabs the kill it's a one for one trade but it is the only fury that's now started up by trick babushka mort is on the rotation mineral is going to taunt him in data remember is going to poke away with just a little bit of damage brandon balls doesn't have that ultimate backup just yet big Yuji drops his ult in the back line vexati onset taken very low here mineral silenced out but brandon balls he's plenty healthy enough to do some damage mort dies for the third time this game and a warrior into the back line he goes, but he's not able to get rid of Data Remember, who's found himself a kill in this fight as well. Mando caught out on an island, and Big Yuji has gotten rid of Sops in the meantime. Back goes Mando, but maybe just to try to sidestep two kills in the fight for the Jing Wei, two assists as well, and it's going to be an Oni Fury for Trick Babushka. That's, again, the highlight of how much work Brandon is doing in these team fights. He's, he's killing people, he's forcing them back, and Mando's in the back line, hits a big ult. And everyone just walks forward. They just keep going in the team <laughs> fight. And he, again, is, wait, guys, I'm, I'm hitting you here. Pay attention to me. It's like that episode of SpongeBob with, with the bully and SpongeBob's punching him and the guy's just going about right. his day, do, you know, doing whatever. Right. So that's what I think of all the time with Chalk, man, is it's just not doing enough. Shadow Chair gets picked off at the right-hand side. Honestly, I think Anxiety Onset can just call fire in that moment. They know that Brandon's on the left-hand side, Mineral's already used the ultimate, maybe they're a little bit scared of Yuji coming in, but it's one Hunbats, and you've got decent ward vision. They had a sentry on fire. I think that if they just give up that Oni Fury in that moment and, and run on over to the Fire Giant, that Anxiety might have had a really good chance to, to sneak it away. Well, it was a close game just a couple minutes ago. Is now extended to a four and some change thousand gold lead here for Trick Babushka. Levels wise, largest discrepancy is in that middle lane. A three level lead for Shadow Chair here could get lengthier. Hey, does a Athena stunt or taunt rather into a, a raw one seem to work out, Agro? I guess it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how that that's how that's supposed to go. The enemy mid laner has no relics. Uh, we taunt him, and Shadow Chair just aims at the Athena and presses one four, and that's a guaranteed yep. kill every time. Data Remember does have to be careful underneath this tier 2 tower as Diesel has to turn down the lights on the rest of this fight. Big UG is in range, but kind of a split push here as Data Remember in the long lane and a couple members of Trick Babushka moving towards the middle lane tier 2 tower. Taunted in is Mando Warrior. That's a good fear no evil, but isn't really going to find much. Execute one more time for Brandon Balls 
as Mando Warrior falls for the third time this game. Out of the Urchin gets itself its first stack of the game for Brandon Balls. I was curious, though, and this might be a good quick second to talk about it. We we're concerned about the chalk. Is the Aaron Dite the answer here to make this chalk more impactful? It's interesting. and uh, I I'm open to the idea. I'm open to the idea. Maybe that's what he needs. Well, Mineral's open to the idea of not dying here, and there was going to be a stun from Mort just for a moment, but the follow-up isn't there as the left side tier 2 tower does end up falling against Mechside Onset, so now it's the left side Phoenix that's open. I suppose luckily for them, Fury is still down for the next two minutes, so Trick Babushka may be turning their attention to other parts of this map. But at 20 minutes in, Trick Babushka have extended what was a 4k gold lead a moment ago, on to about a 6,000 gold lead. And you have to imagine, Agro, that, that with this sort of lead and confidence that they're playing with, that Fire Giant could be soon to go. Absolutely. That's exactly where I'd be looking again. And with that raw sustain, it's very easy to, to tank that up for an extended period of time. Dave, I've done some more thinking about this Chalk with Erendite. Okay. And I think it's going to provide something big. Sometimes when you alt is Chalk and then they run away from you because they don't have to care about what you're doing, you don't know exactly right. where they went. Now, with Erendite, you can communicate right. to your team where everybody is as they're running away from you after you ult. That's smart. It gives right. you, you that can, true sight. You can watch people run from you. I, I guess that right. makes sense to me. And we'll, we'll see if he gets some of that extra vision for himself here. There you go. Now you can see. But that okay, they're all around me. From Big UG, and that's going to drop Mando Warrior. So he saw them all around him, and then he saw them in gray just a few seconds later. So Mando Warrior 45 seconds back in base. Right side tier 2 tower taken down. That's a good taunt. Pulls back in Mort. The trick Babushka electing just to poke away a little bit more damage at this tier 2 tower. Jingu Bang has opted instead to do a bit of a split push of his own. Gets the mid tier 1 tower and likely will drop the mid tier 2 tower as well. So a small silver lining for Mexidi Onset after Trick Babushka grab a kill in another tower. I think that's wise by Jingu Bang to, to give up your losses at this point. Don't, don't worry too much about what's going to happen on this side of the map. You already lost your solo laner. Now you can start to rotate over because you got to be a little bit scared of Fire Giant happening. But that was that was a good split push by Jingu Bang. Got some gold for the team. Well, they're scared of it happening, and it is happening from Trick Babushka, but could just be a bait. Beads used by Jingu Bang cleanses off that taunt from Mineral. Who's sticking around despite... A slightly low mana pool here. Pings are on the left side of the map here as the left side Phoenix is open, right side Phoenix as well. Fire Giant started up and some of that raw sustain will be helpful here. Two members from XID Onset on this right hand side of the map, but likely will not be face checking this FG and that'll make it free for Trick Babushka. Easy for Trick Babushka there. I mean, that's that raw sustain coming into play. You can take that Fire Giant dance as long as you want in that moment because you know that you can keep your health bars high enough. Mineral is there to help just in case and he can zone away with help from Brandon Balls. So this is looking much better for Trick Babushka, but they were looking pretty good in game two as well and, and ended up losing that one. So they can't let off the gas pedal yet. That's true. That's true. Th this lead is pretty lengthy. Still around 6,000 though for Trick Babushka. I mean, I, I guess we are going to start seeing the war on the Phoenix defense front here. So what do you make of the Trick Babushka Siege? What does what the Mexidi Onset defense kind of look for? I think that you're looking for Merlin to be your playmaker on this defense for sure because he's got to try and find a combo over the wall, but Sops has ended up going for some defense, trying to withstand the Siege from Brandon Balls that he's really been under all game. That means that this combo is not going to do that much damage at the end of the day. Not no damage, but not as much as he'd really like. Look for where Sops is and if he can find that Arcane 2-1 over the wall. That's going to be huge. Also to make sure that your frontliners aren't just getting taunted by Mineral into guaranteed damage every time. Now is not where you all in as the raw. You just use your ones yep. to poke. Use those Athena taunts to poke. And then we can all in commit at a later time. Well, it's looking like three men mid. One kind of flex between left and mid in the form of Brandon Balls, and it's going to be Big UG as well, joining him on that left side, Phoenix. Jingu Bang, sole defender on the left-hand side, where four members of Mexadi Onset have stacked towards that middle lane. So small numbers advantages to be found, and unfortunately okay. that goes by the wayside. Mort deleted 
by Shadow Chair here. So four members left alive. 40 second death timers here. This could go from bad to worse, but at least one kill on the board for Trick Babushka. I was going to say, don't all in necessarily, but Shadow Chair is at the pen cap. He's at 40%, 50% with help from that Obsidian Shard passive on that first ability cast every 10 seconds. That does get you over the pen cap, and that lets them him insta-kill more. If you're no evil, on demand a warrior as he was pulled in. Watch out for Jingu Bang, slams down with the Anvil of Dawn and has found a squishy member of Trick Babushka. Big UG killed off here as Brandon Balls looks to turn tail back through some of that raw healing and he gets out alive. So well-timed play from Mexad Yonset. Looks like it will delay the offense here from Trick Babushka. That's big. Jingu Bang again with a big kill. In that time, a little bit of an overcommit. I mean, this composition is very, very good at killing frontliners. Trick Babushka usually just Athena Taunt into a, an ultimate from either Shadow Chair, UG, or Brandon, and that's going to be enough to really take care of that frontliner. But UG pushes Manda Warrior away from Data Remembers DPS. They really need a day to be hitting him consistently with those crits in order to try and set him up for that execute range where Brandon wanted him. But because of the direction that the Fear No Evil Totem pushes Mando, it cuts off Day's DPS. It forces UG and Brandon into the, the little nook between the Tier 2 and Tier 3, or the Phoenixes, on mid and right, I should say. And it makes it sets up Jingu Bang for a really nice dunk yet again. He's, he's played very well in this set for Mexiety Onset. And I think if you are a Mexiety Onset, you have to at least be happy that the first iteration of a Phoenix defense that started off pretty horribly with Mort getting evaporated, at least came out in sort of a wash. You don't lose any Phoenixes, and you're able to trade out one kill onto big UG. But I still think you need many more of those if you're Mexidi Onset to really feel comfortable in this game. Fire Giant buff is going to fall off of Trick Babushka here in the next five or so seconds. So the question for Mexidi Onset is, do you want to move out and contest this next Fire Giant in about a minute? I don't know. I mean, that that defense goes well, but I don't think it's a defense where you go, okay, they they can't siege against us. They, you know, no. our cop is better at it or anything like that. It it felt like a they messed up the execution, so maybe we just wait around and hope they do it again on the Phoenix. I don't think that you right. really can go to Pyromancer necessarily, and now Sops has Soul Reaver, and that's a big boost in damage for him on this defense. I think if I'm anxiety onset, I'm sitting on Phoenixes, but I, I can understand. Uh, the desire to try and test our hand at, at this defense. Yeah, Shadow Chair is going to be hitting quite hard on Tier 2 Artifact, nearly rounding out that sixth and final item, then maybe even trading out boots if this game goes that long. But that's where you can see a big difference. I mean, not only does Sops have a full Tier 2 item left, but he moved into the Breastplate of Valor as well. I mean, Merlin is still going to do plenty of damage, especially with Book of Thoth to, to combine with that. But the idea of Shadow Chair wanting to just 100 to 0 somebody absolutely on the table here at this point. This Fire Giant has started, will be finished here by Trick Babushka one more time. And Mort's not building more magic defense, because he's getting one shot by Ra off of the Athenaton. He's actually building more physical defense, I imagine a Spectral Armor, which is also a big contributing factor for why he's getting one shot at these consistent crits coming from Day to Remember. But Day has kind of hedged his bets here, he hasn't gone all in on that crit. He split it right. nicely. between With just fully stacked rage and your Jing Wei 2, you're pretty much guaranteed to crit all three of those autos. And then the rest of the autos, you might get some crits, but for the most part, you're just going with uh, with your penetration as Mort unless actually decides. Uh, unless it's you, right? And then you're going to get no crits Yeah, unless on it's me, right. And I'm incredibly, <laughs> no one's as unlucky as me. That's really important to remember. Thank you, Dave. I would have forgotten to let everybody know. Uh, no, uh, no Spectral, though, for Mort. Instead, Breastplate of Valor. Here's the crazy thing about cooldown is that it doesn't matter that much when you're dead. Uh, so I don't I don't really love it here for Mort. I right. think that he needed magical defense. A spirit robe would have been phenomenal. Give yourself some damage mitigation whenever you get taunted. That would have been huge. Up that CCR as well at the same time. Make those taunts last a little bit less time so you're getting autoed less. Uh, breastplate is, is near the bottom of, of items where I thought could have been effective. Well, here we go, aggro. Fire Giant Siege round two for Trick Babushka. They're going to do the 4-1 split. Send Big UG to the mid lane. Four members of Trick Babushka plug away some damage on the Mando Warrior. Health bar going low. Diesel, he's going to drop down the ultimate as well. Airstrike swoops Oops. on through. Could be a big dunk from Jingu Bang, and it is indeed. But Big UG 
Turns around to that one. Six of the seven kills from Exide on set. Now gray screened for 50 or so seconds. But still enough of a presence to make Trick Babushka think twice. Mando Warrior is full health. Day to remember, quite the opposite. That's the Jing Wei now dead for another minute. Thorn's doing some good damage as well. The active for Mando Warrior keeps himself alive. Brandon Ball's taken low, but that's a double stun. Root from Mort landed. But this Achilles quite low aggro, and despite being 0 and 3, Diesel, he hits quite hard. As the rest of Mexide Onset look to continue three members down for Trick Babushka. Big Yuji still on the run. Has to use his blink very late in this engagement, but he should be getting out here. Bit of an awkward initiation. Mineral finds a taunt onto Mando, which is a great target because no no magis for him as opposed to what Mort has there as Sops cleans up Yuji. But the knockup from Day kind of sent Mando flying in the wrong direction. I don't know the Shadow Chair uses ult right away on that. I couldn't quite see, but I know that Mando lands in execute range. Brandon hits the wrong target. He actually ends up hitting Mort. And Diesel's ultimate causes so much confusion in all that time that Sops finds a massive combo over the wall, hits on both carries, forces both carries relics at that exact same time, and that turns the fight in Megxiety Onset's favor. That's how you defend. You use that Jibalanke ultimate yep. to, to cause some confusion. Sops finds a big combo. Jingu Bang chases perfectly with his ultimate. Bit of a bit of a sloppy one now for Trick Babushka. It's now only Mineral with that Fire Giant. And if you're Megxiety Onset now, that was the, okay, they, they just have trouble sieging against our comp. They aren't executing super well on that Phoenix attack. Why would we ever leave and try and yep. go for Fire Giant? The only, the only reason is to try and pick them while their relics are still down. As soon as that timer goes away, Megxiety Onset should set up a nice tent, maybe take out a loan from Tom Nook and set up a house <laughs> right underneath that Phoenix because they shouldn't be leaving there at all. And, and you're paying that loan off. For the rest Forever. of your life. The rest of your life. Tom, yeah, Tom Nook your life. is a, a con man through and through and should never be trusted. But it, I like the, the point you bring up for Mexadi Onset. And you, you can sense kind of this intangible change in confidence that they've really left their shell and unfortunately now are starting to back off just to grab a little bit of extra farm. But realizing Fire Giant is back up in 45 or so more seconds, they have the better ward coverage around this Fire Giant pit as well. I mean, if the, the lead technically still with Trick Babushka, but everyone except for Mort at level 20. Mexadi Onset has a second chance at life in this game now. Agreed, but I think the worst thing that they could do to throw away this chance is, is try and contest a Fire Giant sure. when you just don't need to. That's true, right? Point. I mean, <laughs> Trick Babushka's going to keep jamming down these lanes and, and try and get these Phoenixes. That's their only win condition is, you know, if, they, if you just get Fire Giant, what are you going to do? Wait it out? That's, that's not the game plan. Of course you're going to try and run it down and get those Phoenixes. It's the right call to try and end, but with, with the way that these sieges have gone, Trick Babushka just need to, to slow their pace. They're all inning off these Athena taunts still. They're, they're not trying to bait abilities by Sops. They're not baiting ultimates by Jingu right. Bang or Diesel. They're just playing a little bit too aggressively, and now Mineral is, is way too far forward. Well, Mineral's got five members of Mexadi Onset surrounding him. Suddenly... The Athena is gone. That may make Trick Babushka think twice about sticking around. Jingu Bang, Anvil of Dawn into the front line of Trick Babushka this time. Mineral just a little bit too far forward. What are you going to do? Attempt FG, says a man who had FG attempted up against him. Trick Babushka in range, not going to contest. Mexide Onset grab their first fire giant of this game. What else can they find? Not much for the moment. And Oni Fury for Trick Babushka, but the FG buff for the first time, 33 minutes in, goes over to Mexide ID Onset. So like I said, you don't want to go and contest fire. You want to be sitting near your base. If Mineral's going to be there all by himself, you take it. I mean, he's basically throwing his life away at that point. Just a really bad decision there by Mineral. So far away from the rest of his team. No way anyone could come to help. And, and now it's Mexide Onset with all the momentum and... They're favored to win this game. Mineral will be right back on the respawn. Mando Warrior has been taken low. Execute just wide from Brandon Balls. That would have been a big shift in this game. Mineral has rejoined this fight. Snipe just misses, but Mineral finishes off the kill nonetheless. Suddenly, Mexide Onset on the back foot. Jingu Bang taken down by Brandon Balls. A second lease at life for Trick Babushka. 
as the 1v1 between two carries continues. Data Remember doesn't win that one. Sops finds the kill. A small silver lining from Exciety Onset. Two members down for them. One member down for Trick Babushka. And for this fight, that's all she wrote. Unbelievable. That's, that, that fight goes the way it does on What's multiple on? different levels. I, I couldn't tell you, Dave, unfortunately, because it's just been a, a bit of a fiesta here for a little bit. That right side Phoenix Siege, I know Megxiety Onset want to try and push their lead while they have it, but they could have reset and bought some items, healed up a little bit. They don't. Obsidian Shard not being completed for Sops is a, is a particularly big deal in that moment. Shadow Chair doesn't have beads, so maybe they're trying to, to push off of that and really let that be their big catalyst to, to push for that right side Phoenix, but they know Mineral's coming up. He gets there right on time, finds the perfect taunt. Diesel, good dash, because he didn't have beads. He's dead if he gets caught in that moment, but really, really quick reaction from him. Like the attempt, though, from Yuji, certainly worth his time, especially with how much CDR he has, but man, this is uh, this is rough. And then how does Sops win the 1v1 <laughs> against Day to remember right. by speed buff? Day must have gotten supremely unlucky on missing some crits or maybe just missed some auto attacks. That breastplate of valor that I didn't love earlier on is is coming up clutch now, so can't can't criticize it too much. Maybe it's why Sops is still living. And at this point in this game, all is effectively even, right? I mean, everyone is level 20. Everyone at least has completed builds. Boots or not is maybe the biggest thing that you have to look at. But a 2-5-5 five, and five Merlin, despite an unattractive slash line, is still going to be powerful enough to turn around the damage onto a 4-2-9 and nine day to remember. As surprising as it may be, still certainly I mean, he's could top player damage. Three. That's true. The Sops is uh, Sops has been is putting in the work. Absolutely. And there are still three Fire Giant buffs on Mexiety Onset, so still in their favor as all five members respawn from both teams, and, and suddenly we're getting a perspective from back in the Trick Babushka base are going to try their hand at defense. Their defense, not as strong. I mean, it's pretty easy for Athena to just taunt the frontliners who are walking in and Shadow Chair to try and blow them up right after the fact, but... Outside of that, I mean, they don't have the, the Merlin damage in CC. They don't have the, the Gibalanke ultimate to cause a whole lot of confusion. You're really looking for Yuji to find really good ultimates and Mineral to find good taunts. That's the, the, the separating factor for Trick Babushka on the defense. But with Fire Giant falling off in 10 seconds from Anxiety Onset, yep. wise call to, to back it up and not try and jam it there. This is... Uh, this is the, the time now. This is the most even fight we're going to have all game is on this Fire Giant. Well, uh, you know, obviously plenty of objective burn with that Merlin. Maybe objective secure thanks to the Raw. I mean, is that sort of how yep. you read an impending FG fight? Absolutely. Merlin is going to provide way more damage on the objective itself, but not great in terms of making sure the objective goes their way. As far as Raw... Kind of the opposite. He's great at securing that fire giant, but his DPS isn't exactly where you'd want it to be. Though Jingwei is very good at DPSing these objectives, so it's not like you are completely at a huge disadvantage there, but Megxiety certainly would do it faster. They just got to make sure that Shadow Chair can't sneak up and, and snipe it away. Well, 15 seconds before we get to see that play out before our eyes. Fury will be up around the same time, but at this point in the game... That is just an afterthought with Fire Giant twice for Trick Babushka, one more recently for Mexadi Onset. This game has gone from overwhelmingly blue to about even, right in the middle. I think both teams will be maybe tense to start this fight. Mineral doing the front line duties. Mort gets taunted in, but the jump back out from Trick Babushka. A Agro, you could just sense this, this nervousness, I think, from Trick Babushka to fully dive into some of these fights. It's one of those where you, you felt like the game was over. I mean, I'm sure they thought yeah. this game was completely over, that they had no chance of losing. And then you I did. <laughs> get that sinking feeling that, uh, okay, maybe we could lose. And then, oh, well, Mineral got picked, and they got fire. And, oh, oh crap, we could lose soon, not just eventually. And, and that tends to make them play different. Well, Mineral gave FG to Mexi the onset last time around, and he might have just done it again. Too far forward, Mineral gone for 60 more seconds. Fire Giant started. Everyone from Trick Babushka back to that Tier 2 tower line. Fire Giant, Enhanced Fire Giant, more importantly, taken from 
uh, Trick Babushka, Maxadi Onset, Find of the Secure, five members strong, and they're looking towards the right lane. And this should be a pretty good siege opportunity because 40 plus seconds still for Mineral. It's some time before he's back up. And get the, these taunts onto the front liners, Mineral or Shadow Chair has as much pen as he could possibly have, but no Soul Reaver is a big deal. And it's it just not the best tank killer in Raw. The, these, this game plan is not going to work now, and, and Megxiety Onset's doing a great job of just turning and burning on the Athena. Well, it's now or never for Trick Babushka. You got to do it 4v5 for the next 20 seconds before Mineral is back from base. Right side Phoenix stood absolutely no chance. That is the only lane, though, I think that's important to look at where any minions were pushing here for Megxiety Onset. So the onslaught for now will be delayed until we're even strength because of the status of the lanes. Long lane fully pushed out for Trip Babushka and actually may crash in to that left side Phoenix. So Maxadi onset, they're gonna take the right side Phoenix and head on back. Wonder if Megxiety onset are gonna try and siege quickly here and try and get this Primal Fury in their favor, but I feel like this is the right call. No, no need to worry about this Fury if you're Megxiety onset. Primal is not one that you have to worry too much about at this point. Just do this Fury back let's make sure that we get some 3k pots that's what sop just bought which is a wise decision for him a 3k offense pot mages in particular usually get way more value out of getting percent power than getting another item passive and that's certainly the case here for sops jingu bang does the same he bought a 3k potion of power instead of selling his boots which i think is a wise call you're trying to end the game right now and remember those those 3k pots make you deal more damage to structures as well, so it makes yep. the, this uh, the siege even easier for them. I gotta say, Agro, I mean, you hate to hang it all on anyone specifically. I mean, Mineral, I think, up to this point has had a great game and, and even a great set. He's only died twice, but both of those have effectively given that FG over to Mexadi onset. Completely agree. There's there, there's no way to sugarcoat it. I mean, especially the first one. The second one is a little bit more excusable. That's trying to make a play and. You, you know, you just get isolated, your team isn't there. Gibalanke ult, again, is, is really ruining these initiations. And it might just again here as Yuji gets the beads from Jingu Bang. Now Mineral is going to try and find him with a ton eventually. Mineral doing his best to front line against four members of Mech's ID on set. Diesel is going to use his ultimate as well. Watch out. Anvil of Dawn looking for a squishy. Shadow chairs his target, misses the stun, but plenty of damage to grab the kill. Data Remember turns around one. Mid lane for jungle is the trade as we stand. Left side Phoenix taken down. Middle lane the only one left standing, but four members strong for both sides. Oh, Mineral Blink Taunt actually looking for it, but Mando's gonna teleport back in, looking to zone out Day, and he does that, but he might have been left alone. Brandon Balls has three members of Mech's on set looking at him, and that's oh. just enough for them. Diesel grabs the kill, Mineral a little bit far forward here. Could be the third to fall for Trick Babushka. A double kill for Diesel. Puts him in the dirt. Big UG. Data remember. The last two left standing here for Trick Babushka up against Mexidi on set to decide the set. Titan will be pulled here. Maybe just waiting for some extra minions to crash on in. Mando Warrior is going to drop down that ultimate. Down to half health goes the Titan. Fear No Evil sends a couple running. Sops being taken low, but not lower than the Titan. Mexidi Onset turn this one around, and they take themselves the win. Wow, what a, what a game to win from Mexidi Onset. And what a set to win after game one. You couldn't have paid me to, to put my money on Mexidi Onset. But they end up pulling out the win. A big dunk by Jingu Bang. I know he loses his life, but that arc damage on his spin did so much. It insta kills Shadow Chair. Shadow Chair had Aegis up. Imagine if he uses that Aegis, and then we see that four man taunt from Mineral on left happen again. That's probably a team wipe. Shadow Chair gets a quadra kill for himself in that moment off that taunt that Mineral found, but without the mage there, it just wasn't enough damage. And yep. Trick Babushka ended up losing a game that was. 95% chance to win for them, maybe higher than that. Yeah, you're, you're looking at the, the win probability graph here, and it's it's looking like the Bitcoin market if you're Trick Babushka. I mean, that, that thing dips <laughs> oh. hard towards the end, and Maxidi Onset are able to pull this one away. Uh, you know, Sops and Diesel. I mean, Diesel had a positive KDA. Sops did not, but they are... 5, 6K damage, 5, 6K thousand, well, wait, 5, 6K is the number I'm looking for there. Ahead of yeah. Brandon Balls, despite being, you know, iffy in the slash lines, 
the carries really got it done down the stretch here from XID onset. They did, and it's because of the way that the front line was trying to play it here from Trick Babushka. Brandon was not going in with Mineral. Mineral was trying to go in alone and then trying to switch out with Brandon. But between Jibalanke Ultimate separating those fights, Thor Dunks, Thor Walls, big Terra zoning abilities, it's really hard to get past. It was impossible for Mineral to get out of a lot of these engagements. And I think that they didn't do a good enough job of switching up the game plan. That kill the tank, taunt off the, t you know, just. Raw the tank every time off the Athena taunt works really, really well early game. It's not going to be your strategy 45 minutes in. It's just not going to work that well against a six-slotted tank. And I feel like Trick Babushka did not do a good job of switching up their game plan and playing accordingly. Well, here are the results of today's matches. Of course, you can, or yesterday's even, you can see you're up 2 O's across the board. Two ones almost for everyone here in NA. Baskin and the boys with the 2-0 this morning. Locked and goaded versus Baskin and the boys, I think as imagined, is a pretty close matchup. That one goes all three. Baskin and the boys are able to take the win, though, at the end of the day. Let's see how the North American standings do fizzle out here. Baskin and the boys on top, undefeated at 3-0. Bluegie and the Woogies, 2-1. Locked and goaded at 1-1. One one. That surprises me, but, I, you know, with one of those losses coming to Baskin and the boys, they have a good chance to bounce back with some wins against the other teams. Agree. That's a huge win for Baskin and the boys over Locked and Goated, who, you know, I, I would assume Locked and Goated and Baskin and the boys are two top teams for sure. But it seems like the top half of the league is pretty set in stone to me, though, just just based on the eye test and, and, the, right. and the talent level on those teams. In any order, it could be Baskin and the boys, Locked and Goated, and Bluegie and the Woogies. It's up to one of those bottom three teams to, to try and prove that they belong in that top echelon of the squads. But NA Challenger Circuit looks pretty top heavy right now for sure those three teams up top are looking really good top heavy but not necessarily uncontested a lot of these games going the yep. distance but it was a lot of sort of the top teams going up against the bottom team so we'll have to see when they kind of cross those lines how things break down that's all we got for you for the scc this week europe yesterday and a today hey remember two weekends from now next weekend we got a similar structure three games of scc on saturday three games of scc on sunday April 4th, mark your calendars. The SPL will return. And hey, in the meantime, yeah, baby. myself and some of the other pastors are going to be taking some stream slots here on Smite Game. I think, Agro, you're going at 1 p.m. tomorrow, Eastern Time. That's right. On the Smite Game That's channel. right. Show up at 1 p.m. tomorrow. For me. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'll, get, I'll keep the seat warm for you. Don't worry about that. Show up at 1 p.m. tomorrow, and uh, you can try and explain to me why you think Scylla is good because um, I'm, I'm looking forward to that conversation because uh, – I, I don't think I don't think that's the case. <laughs> well, you can watch Agro at 1 p.m. tomorrow, myself at uh, 4 p.m. tomorrow. The rest of the cast is going to have some slots throughout this week. Plenty of other great streamers as well prior to that. April 4th, the return of the SPL. On behalf of myself, Agro, everyone else back in production, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Peach it!